takes the field for its first game of the season, the Michigan State Spartans. What makes the night unique? Sparty opens on the road at the home of the Western Michigan Broncos. The place is filling up. Everyone's pumped for some football, the fans, the players, even the head coach of the home team. Tonight, men, leave nothing. Leave nothing. Burn it all. But take everything. Take everything. Tonight is the night. We get on our how horse and we march the streets of Sparta to prove that our perceptions are deceptions. Captains. Man, we got a date. Captains, captains. We got a date. And I promise you, that date is with destiny. Let's go pick her up. State Series is Michigan State playing the other in-state FBS schools not in the Big Ten Conference, with the Spartans going on the road once to each site. The 80-mile drive from Spartan Stadium to Kalamazoo has been made by the team and its entire usual traveling party, filling hotel rooms, selling out the stadium, and creating a big community-wide football frenzy. I'm Alan Bestel. Coach Dan Hawkins joins us Michigan State at Western Michigan. Excited here, Alan. This is a huge, huge opportunity. Western Michigan gets the Spartans at home. That just doesn't happen. You don't see a Power 5 team going to a non-Power 5 team, especially in your own state. Michigan State won the toss, has elected to defer. They will kick away to Western Michigan, and the first game of the season is underway. deep out of the end zone and with room down the near sideline all the way across midfield down by the 30 yard line Darius Phillips what an opening for the Broncos Darius Phillips the receiver turned corner who is a dynamic returner Gets a big momentum start. That's huge in a game like this for the Broncos. So Western Michigan will go to work for the first time at the Spartan 30-yard line. 72-yard return from in his own end zone. You need to have some moments like this. And when you're playing a team like Michigan State, the number five team in the country, you've got to have some momentum builders and some confidence builders for your team. Hawk, the referee, Jerry McGinn, was just making an announcement. We're not getting his microphone at the moment. So we'll follow up on what's going on downstairs. It looks like there's a problem with the game clock. The game clock's reading all zeros. Reset the clock The 14, 48. You see the scoreboard on our screen there at 15 minutes, and the clock in the stadium reads all zeros. So that's what the problem is. And so the Western Michigan offense that last year set all kinds of team and records in, Mac, in the MAC conference, led by Zach Terrell, the quarterback who a year ago was first in the MAC in completion percentage. He was a second team All MAC. He was the MAC Distinguished Scholar Athlete Award winner. And he's here with his star running back, Jarvion Franklin, 31 to his right. To throw. Nobody there to go, and he's going to be wrapped up and taken down by Joel Heath, one of the big defensive linemen for the Spartan front. Zach's got to get a rip on the ball. He's got to throw it on time here. He doesn't have time to get his front four to hold on to it. Paul carcatera has got the field level covered for us tonight. You know, Alan, why would a Mac school like Western Michigan think they have a shot against the number five team in the nation in Michigan State? For Bronco Nation, it's quite simple. It's their head coach, P.J. Fleck. He told me this is not a David and Goliath scenario, and his team won't assume anything in regard to how good Michigan State is. Flex program isn't satisfied with, with best effort. It's not good enough, according to him. It's about creating a new best. Throw out to the left to Daniel Braverman. He was wrapped up and covered by Vayante Copeland for no gain. It brings up third down and long for the Broncos. Great open field tackling in today's modern football. Everybody's throwing the quick screen outside. You've got to be able to tackle. Talking to the coaches yesterday, they play, Michigan State plays real football every day. They're not afraid to tackle. They're not afraid to hit. So third down and long, the third down back for the Broncos. Fabian Johnson comes in. He's to the right of quarterback Terrell. Terrell throws near side. Michael Henry looking for some running room. 
He'll get a chunk, but he won't get enough, and it'll bring up fourth down. And the field goal unit coming on for the Broncos. Excellent job by the end, Shalik Calhoun turning and running to that play. A uh, lot of pressure, a lot of pursuit. Demetrius Cooper in there well, the athletic defensive end. This front four for Michigan State might be as talented as anybody in the nation. Andrew Haldeman is the field goal kicker for the Broncos. 75% kicker, his long is from 52 yards. That one is up. And it hooks left, wide left. And the Broncos will come up empty and not make use of the 72-yard run they got on the opening kickoff of this game. So the ball goes over to the Michigan State Spartans. As we say hello to you from Kalamazoo, Alan Bestwick joined by Coach Dan Hawkins and Hawk for Michigan State, number five in the country, uh, loaded with talent, but they come in with some questions to be answered. Yeah, they do. You've got the, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Connor Cook, and arguably one of the best offensive lines in the country as well. You see Jeremy Langford, 1,500 yards rushing. Tony Lippett, both of those guys are gone. The whole backfield, the whole receiving core is new for the Spartans. Handoff on first down for the Spartans. Quick hitter for a very little game. I think you're going to see a lot of that early on here, Allen. Again, with a talented old line, a veteran quarterback. They're going to pound the ball here a little bit, see which running back gets the hot hand, and then start dealing cards to all those new receivers. Madre London was the setback. He remains in the game on second down behind Connor Cook. Cook throws over the hands and just out of reach of Aaron Burbridge. It falls incomplete and brings up third down and long. Michigan State, Michigan State does such a nice job of play action, and they pull the guard, fake the back, get outside the pocket. Connor Cook normally is pretty talented on the perimeter running. He's a pretty mobile guy for a big quarterback. He can do a lot of things. They will run the option with him as well. He's pretty versatile. So third down and long for the Spartans. Madre London in motion, now sets. And Cook the throw. Looking outside, a great catch by Aaron Burbridge. Fighting off and reaching up high to pull down the ball and get the Spartans a first down. Really nice recognition going against Ronald Zamort there. A really talented corner for Western. But a talented quarterback, an experienced quarterback, senses the pressure, bringing seven that time, finds the weak spot in the coverage. Great throw and catch on the outside shoulder. 19 yards on the third and nine, and a fresh set of downs close to midfield for the Spartans. Look pretty good at getting the big chunks when needed. It'll be London. Penalty flag comes in near side. London got a lot of room near side. Gets a block. He's headed down the sideline toward the goal line. Into the end zone, but we'll check the flag back at the line of scrimmage. Here's the issue. This is a pre or an early season issue. Flanker didn't get on the Legal ball. Legal formation. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. The down remains. One. Michigan State went unbalanced. Needed the flanker to step up on the ball. Did not. Therefore, he had six guys in the backfield. You're going to see right here, right on this spot, goes in motion. The flanker is off the ball on the other side. Five guys in the backfield. So the touchdown taken off the board for Mark D'Antonio, the ninth year head coach of the Spartans, who has put together a program that is grinding out wins season after season and one of the favorites for the college football playoff in 2015. Cook the throw near side, attempting to spin around and get his hands on the ball. A.J. Troop, but defended there nicely by Ronald Zamort for the Broncos, and it goes incomplete. Hard to tell always sometimes on the TV camera, but boy, do the Spartans have some length at receiver. Those guys are tall, big, rangy receivers. They're tough to cover. Now you see right here, that's not something you see in modern day football very much. That's actually Allen <laughs> called a huddle. a huddle. That's called a huddle. They did it once upon a time in football. Been back about when I played Pop Warner. Yeah. 
Shelton has the ball on the around carry. Chase to the sideline. Out of bounds by Grant De Palma, the excellent linebacker for the Broncos. Little fly sweep action. A lot of players listed on the depth chart for the Spartans. Trying to find again those three primary people that will come in, both in their two back and their one back sets. A lot of question marks, as we said at the top of the show. And of course, they've recruited well, and there's a lot of talent both in the backfield and out wide. So a third and long again for the Spartans. They converted on the last one with a 19 yarder. Here's Cook to throw again. Looking downfield, cutting inside, McGarrett King, but the ball falls incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth down. Those are the throws that Connor Cook's got to make if he's going to be on the elite scene. Uh, we saw Trayvon Boykin last night on the stage, first night of college football. But you get pressure. Connor Cook had pretty good protection from that veteran offensive line. Trying to throw a little dagger route over here on the backside. Had him. He's got to get his front foot and get that ball down a little bit. Now, here's one of the new need-to-replace situations for the Spartans. Four-year starting punter Mike Sadler is gone. This is redshirt freshman Jake, Hart Jake Hartbarger, who can kick the ball a mile. Just doesn't have a ton of experience. It'll be grabbed and caught there by Darius Phillips. And the Broncos will start from their 14-yard line. Mark D'Antonio, P.J. Fleck, the head coaches in Michigan State at Western Michigan tonight. Western Michigan, Michigan State and Western Michigan scoreless, just underway in the first quarter on the opening night of their 2015 seasons. So the Broncos come back out for their second possession. Quarterback Zach Terrell. With Jarvion Franklin to his left in the backfield. Motion for Daniel Braverman. And the handoff inside gets nothing. Brendan Fitzgerald is on the Keep Us Updated on What's Going On desk tonight. Brendan, what's happening? SMU taking on Baylor, and Baylor breaking in new quarterback Seth Russell. Bryce Petty's gone. No problems. Four-yard touchdown. He had three touchdowns in the first couple of minutes of this game. It's 14-7 as they continue the first quarter. Alan, back to you. Hope the scoreboard operator got a good night's sleep there for uh, that one, Brendan. Second and ten. Terrell to throw. Under pressure. Looking outside. And is finally forced out of bounds on the sideline by Riley Buller with a short gain. And it will bring up third down for the Broncos. Riley Bulla taking over the middle linebacker position this year for the Spartans. Very familiar name. And one of the things his coaches say about him is he has shown incredible speed from sideline to sideline. Very smart. If the name sounds familiar, that would be his dad, his uncle, his grandpa, his brother. His younger brother backs him up. <laughs> they just keep plug it, plug and play in middle linebacker. Just find a bullet, throw him in there. Broncos need the 24 to get a fresh set of downs. Got the playoff ball batted at the line, up for grabs, intercepted. Spartans come up with the interception. Monte Nicholson brings down the batted ball and a turnover deep in their own territory for the Broncos. Michigan State bringing six, dropping five. They're famous around the country for this. You're going to see pressure up inside. Six rushers all coming, playing five. Now, you've all heard zone blitz. That's rushing five, dropping six, but where Michigan State's made a living is bringing six, dropping five. Lawrence Thomas with the tip. They live for that on third down. Thomas, one of that senior experienced defensive front, one of the best in the nation for the Spartans. And so here comes the Michigan State offense in business at the 27-yard line going in. Unbalanced again. And around R.J. Shelton takes the ball. Just tripped up out on the far sideline. It was Rontavious Atkins who got a fingertip on a shoelace, Paul. Well, fifth-year senior Connor Cook's resume, quite impressive. 23-3 as a starter, Big Ten title, led the Spartan wins in the Rose and Cotton Bowls. However, this past week, he was not voted as one of the three Michigan State captains, but make no mistake about it, this is his offense. Head coach Mark D'Antonio said he drives the car, the truck, pilots the plane, however you want to term it. <laughs> Does he wash the dishes, too? <laughs> Far side, London looking for the pylon. Is he going to get there? Touchdown is the signal. Spartans are on the board.
Really awesome job by the Spartans here. They've been setting up that fly sweep. They're going to fake the fly sweep, come back with a little counter action outside. You're going to get motion across. Then they're going to come back with a counter back outside over here. Good setup on that. Really nice play calling, really good setup offensively. All these backs. Madre London comes in at 216. Holmes is 216. We're going to see the freshman LJ Scott highly recruited at 233. These guys are yards after contact type players. You got to get more than just one to get them down. The replay officials looking to make sure that Madre London got the end zone, got the pylon before any part of him touched down out of bounds. It'll be a 24 yard score if it stands for the redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Who has come out with the first start of the year on top of what was a very stiff running back competition for the Spartans in their spring and the summer camps. A lot of production to replace at the running back position. Coach D'Antonio talked about having a stable of guys, and I really believe that's important. I think you need about three guys to make it through the season, especially if you're playing a schedule like Michigan State plays. They've got Oregon coming up next week. They're going to Michigan. You've got Ohio State. You've got to go on the road to Nebraska. You need some power backs. You need some healthy backs. There's got to be about three guys that can make it through the year. Still continuing to look at this. Does he get the pylon in the corner of the end zone here, Hawk, before any part of he, his body, touches down on that sideline or out of bounds? I think he's good. I think he gets it. I think he's good. Touchdown. And the confirmation comes. Really nice wrinkle. Michigan State, unlike a lot of teams now, you've seen Western uh, Michigan out here. They're kind of a spread team. One back. Might be three by one, two by two. But Michigan State, you're seeing a lot of different formations, a lot of different motions. That makes it tough on a defense. You get out flanked, you get out leveraged. You don't have people in every gap, as P.J. Fleck talked about yesterday. You saw the shrug. I think the Michigan State staff thought that the uh, touchdown was called off, and they pulled the kicking team back off the field, and the referee said, no, 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 it's good. And here comes the point after try from Michael Geiger, the junior kicker from Toledo, Ohio. And he's got it. So the tipped ball on the big push by that strong Spartan defensive line, Lawrence Thomas tipped in the pass. It's intercepted, puts Sparty in great field position. And from there, Madre London with the 24-yard rumble around right side and into the end zone for a 7-0 Michigan State lead. Is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. One of 48 college football games on the ESPN Networks over Labor Day weekend. Part of more than 450 games this season. We're going to bring you capped, of course, by the National Championship game in Glendale, Arizona, January 11th. Tonight we're in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where Michigan State put together the quick scoring drive off the interception. And is up 7-0 on Western Michigan. Mark D'Antonio and P.J. Fleck on the opposite sidelines, both building programs based around a culture. More on that in a minute after the uh, kickoff. Remember, this has been a, kind of an eventful game already here, Hawk, but the 72-yard uh, opening kickoff return by the Broncos that resulted in the missed field goal. Darius Phillips gets a second try, and he'll bring it out of the end zone again. And again, he's got some room. Got the corner. It's a foot race to the end zone. 101 yards, Darius Phillips, touchdown, Western Michigan. Phillips with two kickoff returns, one that went 72 yards, this one 101 yards all the way to the end zone. 
You've got to have a few moments in ball games. We were talking a little bit off air that long return last drive went for not and sometimes it's reverse momentum. So now they've captured it back got him back in this game emotionally. Point after try is good. And 13 seconds after the Spartans went up by seven the game's tied. After the big return, kicked it back to him. They did a nice shot countering here, coming back away from the kick direction. And Allen, there's no substitute for speed. <laughs> speed kills, right? It doesn't matter. NASCAR, Indy, football, baseball, it doesn't matter. Gets out leverage, did a nice job of occupying people, no contain on the outside. Coach D'Antonio talked a little bit about the importance of special teams. Of course, yeah. he's known to pull a few out of his hat as well. Now Phillips was a wide receiver turned defensive back by the Western Michigan staff just because of his speed. In their defensive scheme, they need speed at those backfield positions. Well, he showed it on the kick return also. And we're even at seven. Now look out on the other end, because number 12 for the Spartans, R.J. Shelton, he took one to the house last year against Penn State, so he's capable of doing the same thing going the other way. And Monte Nicholson also back deep. Nicholson from a yard in his end zone. With room! Check that, Shelton out across the 35. And that's where Michigan State will go to work on its next possession. There you go, Coach Black, getting it done. Look at him getting it done. <laughs> and he even pulled up in the restricted area. Did he though? That's fun. Both of these guys might want a squib kick after this because kickoff returns pretty dangerous on both sides. First and 10 Michigan State. This is Gerald Holmes in the game at running back with a little room on the outside trying to turn the corner. Finally knocked down by Asante Brown but a first down for the Spartans as we check with Brendan. Allen, SMU has a new head coach. It's Chad Morris, who was the offensive coordinator at Clemson. Last year in September, SMU had 12 points in all of September. They've got 14 early. They're tied with Baylor, 14 apiece in the first quarter. Back to you. It's not 4th of July, but we've had some football Ooh, fireworks SMU. early. And that's Chad game. Morris can put up some points now. Coming over for Clemson, former high school coach in Texas. Very imaginative. Timeout taken by Western Michigan. Coach Flex saw something he didn't like and ran onto the field and signaled for the timeout. We got some fireworks here too. Seven all first quarter. Michigan State playing at Western Michigan tonight. Alan Desperate, Dan Hawkins. Michigan State has the ball. First and ten at the 45-yard line of Western Michigan after the Western Michigan timeout. Holmes. First contact just behind the line of scrimmage made by Austin Lewis. A gain of uh, about five for the Spartans. You see De Palma there in your screen. Those of you old school football fans, he's five foot nine. He reminds you of Sam Mills, old middle linebacker from the National Football League. He, tro he transferred here from Rose Holman. He's an engineer. Smart guy. He's at five nine, but man, he's a baller. Connor Cook looking for a receiver. Throws. A wrestling match ensues there. Do they give him the catch? They will. McGarrett Kings gets the catch. He had company there from Rontavius Atkins, but he managed to hang on to the ball. Bailing out Connor Cook again. A little pressure. Connor Cook does a nice job surveying. A little whip route outside. Good strong hands. Good position by Rontavius Atkins. Watching those guys before the game, everybody catching the ball with the thumbs in and fingers in with a strong part of the hand. Third and one. This is going to be close. Holmes stacked up there by Austin Lewis, among others, for the Broncos. Where do they spot it?
They will move the change and it'll be a first down for Michigan State. Second effort by Holmes there kind of kept those legs pumping. Western Michigan settling down a little bit against the running game but so far the Spartans really have kind of had their way in many respects. That's something PJ talked about keeping them under four yards on first down. Honor hands off Holmes again this time met by the inside of the Bronco defensive front. David Curl 68 for the Broncos first there the uh, junior from Shelby Township Michigan. Going to see zone read right here, but watch Connor Cook as he comes out around the edge. Really nobody on him, no eyes on him. Don't be surprised if they come back to that one. Look at Curl, the first year starter. Michigan State opening up the formation playbook. I don't think they've been in the same formation twice so far in these two drives. The swing pass. Holmes. Well read. Now a stack of Broncos there. Grant De Palma. Ronald Samor. And company on the stop. Came out a little bunch look on the left hand side. I think Connor Cook thought the bunch formation would spray the coverage out of there and it didn't. I think he'd had Josiah Price working back in the middle of the field. This is where that good old line. You got Jack Allen at center. You got Jack Conklin at tackle and left tackle. Provide you a lot of protection. Throw across the center. Kings has the reception and the first down for the Spartans. And he's all the way down inside the 15. Really nice. Western Michigan opts to go with three and drop eight. Ah, the Spartans got a little tempo of their own right here. We could go fast too. Cook, near side, penalty flag coming in, throwing in the area of Aaron Burbridge, but a marker down, and we'll check the flag. Looks like it's going to be holding. I think they got Ronald Zamort there with a little egregious holding. Pulling him towards the ground. Big Ten crew refereeing the game tonight. Holding. Defense, number seven. Ball be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. I like the tempo by Michigan State. Used to huddling up. This is the thing I think it's really cool when you mix up the tempos. It's not just going the same fast all the time. You get adjusted that. But if you huddle and then sometimes you go fast, that makes it tough on the defense. So the Spartans with the first and goal. London the setback. And gets the ball from Cook. Trying that right side sweep again. Bounces off one and into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. Nice counter play. Good power running. Madre getting his shoulder down. Breaking tackles. That's Big Ten football right there. And an injured player down on the field. So Mark D'Antonio's team. Marches very efficiently downfield and into the end zone. Watching two programs here, Alan, I have a lot of respect for both of these coaches, and they do a lot about culture. We're talking about row the boat. We'll get into that with uh, Western Michigan. This year, Mark D'Antonio, reach higher. But two coaches that really care about the kids in their program, think about outside the box and beyond football, do it with integrity, really impressive. This is two really good models for college football playing together in Kalamazoo tonight. Here's the senior linebacker, Grant De Palma, one of the defensive leaders for this Bronco team. Oh, yeah. Swinging gates. Nice. Matt McShude is going to get stopped. Well, it looked good. It looked good on the chalkboard. They usually do. <laughs> the trickeration comes up short. And so it'll be 13-7 for the Spartans. Same play they came to earlier, but without the fly sweep motion going the other way. 
Two tight ends in the game creates another gap. And that's not something you see again a lot in modern day football is two tight ends and having a seven man blocking front up up up, up on the on the defense there. So and when you start blocking down and pulling people creating extra gaps, that's a nightmare for the defensive coordinator. So PJ Flex team able to deal with the uh, the trickeration on the point after try and it's a six point game now. Folks here at Western Michigan, so appreciative of the opportunity to host this game. Uh, the hotel we were staying in, full of people, the fans are here. They expected the crowd would be about 50-50 for this one. And that's a pretty accurate look at what we've got. And now Mr. Dangerous, back to receive another kick. Do not kick it to 14. <laughs> I was not magna cum laude, but I'm not going to give that guy another shot. Yeah, hey, kudos to Mark Hollis, athletic director and Michigan State, looking at the big picture and saying, hey, we're going to go on the road to these directional schools in Michigan and play at your place. He's going to get the ball anyway. Just had to hesitate enough. He couldn't quite get around the corner. And no big return this time for Darius. Tomorrow on ESPNU, watch the UTEP Miners take on the number 18 Arkansas Razorbacks at 3.30 Eastern, exclusively here on ESPNU, and watch ESPN, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. So, my partner here, Dan Hawkins, former head coach, uh, sees things differently than maybe some of us would. What's the Hawks eye on here? I always like to talk a little ball. You see five guys in coverage, normally at six, and Michigan State rushing six. Kind of famous about this, Pat Narduzzi made a quote of Ohio State stealing their defense. Well, there's a lot of people around the country trying to steal that pressure package. Jarby on Franklin with the inside handoff hit by Jalen Watts Jackson for Michigan State. And the three-yard gain on first down for the Broncos. There's Franklin, the uh, sophomore from Tinley Park, Illinois. Carroll under pressure. Down he goes. Zach, you got to get that internal clock going, my man. When your back foot hits the ground, you need to throw it. Your hitch and check it down. You don't have time to dance around in there. You've got four beasts in there. You see those guys, Shalik Calhoun, Malik McDowell, Joel Heath, Lawrence Thomas. Those guys are going to close on you in a hurry. Get rid of the football. And so third down and 10 here for Western Michigan. This is where they get creative. You see they're in a three down front up front, which is a little different than they normally use on first and second down. Braverman with the quick hitter from Terrell. He'll get some yardage, but not enough. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Broncos. Riley Bullough with the push out of bounds for the Spartans. Talked a little bit about to PJ yesterday about would he be in four down mode sometimes. Obviously, they're a little too far backed up in their own uh, territory to hear do it now. But you get a little closer against a team like Michigan State. Sometimes you have to think, well, we're probably in four down territory here. We need to make some some progress. A little different formation here for the kick also. Jay Schroeder to give it the rugby style punt. Which will take a nice Bronco roll inside the 30 yard line, stopping at the 27. Like the funky stuff there on special teams. Now you're a big fan of that, aren't you? Every time the ball hits the <laughs> ground, you're going to lose 19 yards. And when nobody returns it, you're able to rugby style kick it end over end and let it bounce. And they can't get a beat on it. That's a big weapon for you. Now you've got to be sound in your protection, but. That keeps the special teams coach up all night trying to defend that formation. As you look at those rush and pass numbers, Mark D'Antonio told us they wanted to be about 50% run and pass. That was their goal. So here the Spartan offense back out on the field. Connor Cook. 
throws far side, falls incomplete in the direction of A.J. Troop. Nicely defended by Darius Phillips, who's been the star of the game so far for Western Michigan. Yeah, I'm surprised Darius isn't wore out over there. He's, he's run a lot more on those two kickoff returns than most everybody does in a college football game. What you got, Paul? London touchdown for Michigan State. You saw Grant De Palma carted off there by the trainers from Western Michigan. He is out of the game right now. He has an ice pack on his left groin. He would be a huge loss. Leading returning tackler for Michigan, Western Michigan, and P.J. Fleck, the head coach, calls him the guy in the middle with unreal instincts. He's their leader. Jason Silva has taken his place in the middle, and a timeout is taken here. Why are we running the same time now? By the Spartans. Uh, you talked culture, Hawk. Uh, let's talk as we look at the Broncos, Western Michigan. Everywhere you look around this stadium, you'll see sayings, various sayings from row the boat to family to elite to to uh, uh, even talk about a tree. I think he's really trying to change not only the culture of his team, the campus, the town. You see it all over the row the boat family. Forget about me. I love you. There's row the boat. You see oars all over the place, all over. Cart could talk about the meaning, but he talks about the energy. He talks about the sacrifice. Paul, what does row the boat mean in P.J. Fleck's definition? It's the oars, the energy you bring to your life. The boat is the sacrifice, the compass is direction you're going in. And P.J. Fleck, an energetic guy to say the least. When rowing a boat, he said, as in life, you are never sure where the future may take you. You aren't able to see your future. However, you can live in the present, learn from the past, and just keep rowing. First carry for Michigan State's fabulous freshman L.J. Scott from Hubbard, Ohio. Who, uh, Coach D'Antonio told us he would get into the game and get his ears wet. Really excited to see L.J. cut it loose. He was a guy that Ohio State came in on late last year. He stayed committed to Michigan State. They don't play a lot of true freshmen here. There's 25-year seniors on this Michigan State team. You normally redshirt, but you're seeing a true freshman in the backfield going right now for the Spartans. Pressure. Cook steps up, throws wide open on the outside, and eluding the defender, Burbridge with one man to beat. He's grabbed and finally wrestled to the ground, but a big pitch and catch to Aaron Burbridge. And the Spartans in business again, deep in Western Michigan territory. 55 yards. Caught him in a blitz, picked it up that time. They dropped three last time, and, and or excuse me, brought three and dropped eight. They found a zone, and here you see him going fast after the first down, picking up the tempo. Scott going to fight for five to six yards before he meets a wall of defenders. Darius Phillips, Andre Turner on the outside for the Broncos. LJ coming in at 233. Nice patience on that run. Showing his versatility. And you saw him take on a lot of bodies, and they got him out of bounds, and they didn't get him down. One of your uh, hawkisms is you got to play your dudes. You got to have dudes. You got to have dudes. Boy dogs, creatures. You need those guys on your roster. Here's that two tight end formation again, creating extra gaps, which is a problem, particularly at the top of the screen there right now for Western Michigan. Cook pulls it out, throws near side. Burbridge off his fingertips, falls incomplete. Ronald Zamort there. And it'll bring up third down for Michigan State. I, I mentioned your phrase, dudes, because when we talked to Coach D'Antonio last night and talking about his young running back, L.J. Scott, he said he is a guy. He's a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And these guys are all powerful, can break tackles. You just don't see a lot of freshmen built like L.J. Scott. And then the variety of the running game, what Michigan State does for a young guy to come in and not only learn the formations and the runs, but also the pass protection is pretty extensive. They need the four-yard line for a first down. Cook throws for more. Touchdown in the end zone. Josiah Price with the Spartan grab. One of his favorite targets in the red zone. A little simple seam route. There's some experience, hooking up with some experience because Connor was able to throw that thing. If you see the seam route up at the top of the screen, coming in here, good timing, good strong hands. That's two players trusting one another. 
Michael Geiger for the point after try. And this time they do kick it. And it's good. Well, a six play, 73 yard drive. Took a minute, 41 seconds. And it wound up on the Josiah Price nine yard touchdown catch. And the score you see there, 27, Michigan State. Connor Cook, the senior quarterback, listed in some areas as a top five potential candidate for the Heisman Trophy this year. Uh, really, it, after last year, did it all for the Spartans, and still, they feel he can get even better. Got a chance to break all the records, may break a few of Brian Hoyer's tonight. Of course, he's closing in on Kirk Cousins, two NFL quarterbacks from the Spartans. Uh, very mobile. These guys are on a, a won four bowl games in a row, 11 win seasons. Uh, he is a guy because of the he's got a chance to play Oregon next week. He's got a chance to play Ohio State late in the season. He's going to have some marquee games to prove his worth and he might get a trip to New York based off his performance in those big games. So Cook talking it over with his offense while the Spartan kicking team is on the field after the touchdown strike. It's been a game of big kick returns for Western Michigan so far. All of those executed by Darius Phillips. This time it's Daniel Braverman that is back deep. Number eight, he's got the ball at the two. Hit there at the 20 yard line and dropped as we check with Paul. You're a three year starter in Connor Cook. You own the Michigan State offense. Well, when you talk to Jim Bowman, he said you have to grow in inches when you're as good as Connor Cook, not yards. How did he get better this offseason? He's getting the ball out a lot quicker. He's reading defenses and his consistency. As good as he's been in the past, there's been some ups, there's been some downs. His trajectory in his fifth year, all up. So Cook on the sidelines while Zach Terrell Comes back onto the field, the redshirt junior for Western Michigan. First and 10 at their 27-yard line. Pressure picked up well. Ball thrown near side, caught and just stepping out of bounds with it was Corey Davis, a big-time receiver that Coach P.J. Fleck and their offensive coordinator for Western Michigan, Kurt Shiraka, think is going to be an NFL player in the very near future. Corey Davis, 6'3", 205. He got deep against everybody last year. Good matchup for this young secondary that the Spartans got on the field tonight. Davis's first touch of the night. He'll need a lot more of those if Western Michigan's going to see a lot more of the end zone. Here's Braverman on the end around. Caught in the backfield, tripped up, and knocked down there. Monte Nicholson on the stop for the Spartans. Nicholson, the sophomore from Pennsylvania. Monte Nicholson running out of the middle of the field from that safety position. We'll see if P.J.'s got a little something up his sleeve with a little sweep pass. A little play action pass. Anytime you have the safety coming down and making a play there, you're thinking, who's got the middle of the field? Second and long is not where you want to be if you're Western Michigan against the Spartans. Terrell throws, gets the ball out. Caught, end of the ground there. Davis, second consecutive touch. It'll set up third down. The thing Zach's doing a better job now is he's getting the ball out of his hands. He's taking the drop, seeing it, throwing it, not messing around. That's important against this front because you just don't have enough time to buy yourself extra room back there running around. They will be facing the other end zone when the second quarter begins. Number five, Michigan State has put 20 points on the board in the opening quarter of its season including a couple of touchdown runs by Madre London. It's 20 to seven Spartans. It's here in Michigan that brings the number five team in the country, the Michigan State Spartans, to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo for the season opening game, getting the second quarter underway with the Spartans leading by a score of 20 to seven. Alan Destwick, Dan Hawkins, Western Michigan has the ball. Third down. You see they need the 48-yard line. See all these guys milling around right here. You see them checking to the sideline. Ah, they bring three this time and drop eight. 
Terrell throws. He's got Braverman, and he'll just barely get first down yardage. Riley Bulla on the coverage for the Spartans. Daniel Braverman led the team in rushing, or excuse me, receiving last year. Corey Davis, number 84, the big play receiver, but Braverman really the guy underneath and inside in the slot that does a lot of the dirty work for the Broncos. Handoff. Jarvie on Franklin with some tough running yards as we check in with Brendan, probably on Baylor SMU. Yes, indeed. The point's still coming, Allen. And Seth Russell, plug and play at quarterback for Baylor. So far, so good. He's up close to 200 yards. He's got the touchdown on the ground, and now he's thrown for two touchdowns. This bombed a KD Cannon who got a step on the defense. It's a two touchdown lead for the Bears in Dallas. Somehow I had a feeling that the trend of the night is going to be the scoreboard rolling up down there in Big D. Second and four, longest running play of the night. In fact, that last running play got more yards running than Western Michigan did the entire first quarter. Here, the quick hit to the outside. Braverman got twisted around backwards as that ball fell incomplete. Vionte Copeland on the hit. Braverman a little slow to get up. That ankle might have gotten pinned on the ground underneath him as Copeland made the hit. I think it was his knee. He does not look good. He's a tough kid. Now, one of the things that Western Michigan's done a nice job this series is going with a little quick hitter throws, quick hitter runs, things that don't take as much time for that defense of the Spartans to get after him. This might be a situation where P.J.'s thinking, ah, we might think four downs right here. Pressure. Tries to dump the ball outside to Fabian Johnson. That's going to be a hold. And maybe more as Terrell wound up on the ground at the end of the play. Big hold on right tackle. Holding. Offense. Number 77. Penalties to climb. Fourth down. That's Shibua yeah. ok Okorafor, the sophomore right tackle. Chooks, they call him. 6'5", 275. He's an athlete. Hasn't played that much football. Was a guy recruited by several SEC schools that P.J., who's who's won the MAC recruiting war the last couple years, the best recruiting class the last two years, but he was a guy that could have been an SEC player that P.J. managed to keep home. So the punt team on for Western Michigan. Or will they do something different here? No, nope, they'll kick it away. McGarrett King with a lot of company around him, but he will make the fair catch at uh, just about the 15-yard line for Michigan State. Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon, ESPNU brings you College Football Sunday. From Heisman hopefuls to championship contenders, College Football Sunday is the only show that ranks them all exclusively on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Be interesting to see if we see number 24, Gerald Holmes, a little bit more the tail back here. They're actually trotting out Madre London. Just trying to get a feel for which one of these backs Coach D'Antoni likes to go with the hot hand. Yeah, it kind of looks like, Hawk, the pattern so far is, uh, is Coach D's putting him in for a series at a time. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought we might see a little more of Gerald Holmes on this drive. There's London. Not much running room there off the center. Big hit on the uh, inside by Nathan Braster. The uh, left end for Western Michigan. Western Michigan, you see right here, there's a guy in there, but they're what's called double eagle or bear defense. You got five guys on the line of scrimmage, giving you a little better presence in the run game. Takes away from some of your coverage, but nice adjustment by Western Michigan, getting extra guys on the line of scrimmage to help against that run game. Loss of about a half yard. Bringing some extra bodies. Cook's going to throw. Little hand fighting going on on the far side, and a flag will come in. Ronald Zamort there with his hands on Aaron Burbridge, and the Spartans are going to get some free yardage. Fade route, not one of the most completed pass interference. 
Defense, number seven, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Not one of the easiest throws unless you're Baylor. They throw the snot out of that, that nine route. We call the nine route there, but got him a little man pressure look and gave him an opportunity. I think that's got to be Western Michigan's answer. They've got to crowd the line of scrimmage and stop the running game. Talking to Coach Pinkham, he does not want these guys rushing for over 100 yards, and that's where he's going to start. Not going to let them run the football. They're going to try and run it again. And London quickly hit at the line of scrimmage. Be a very short gain of about two. Jason Silva, first contact there for the Broncos. Now, one, one of the things that, uh, that Coach Fleck talked about, we're trying to stop Michigan State, was, yeah, Connor Cook's a great quarterback. But we have to make Connor Cook and somebody else beat us. Yeah, he just handed off to one guy, but he wants to make it throw it to some inexperienced receivers or certainly not as productive as they've had in the past. Nice little shift motion there to out leverage and get an advantage going back to the left side. Cook hit, drops the ball, it's on the ground, scramble for it. We'll sort this one out. Broncos ball. DJ's leveraging the ball over there. Look at him. I got ball leverage. I know how to hold on that ball. Watch Keon Adams, number 12, the junior from Salisbury, North Carolina. Good pressure coming off the edge. Connor Cook needs to hang on to that. Nathan Braster coming off the edge. He's another guy, Bracer, 6'5", 258, sophomore. Where you see a lot of fifth-year seniors on this Michigan State team, if you go down the roster of Western Michigan, you see a lot of true freshmen and a lot of true sophomores because he's really injected this program the last couple of years in recruiting. Hawk, they uh, dropped the flag on that play and called defensive holding. So the ball is going back to Michigan State for the first down. Shelton. Ball's out again. And the Broncos have it again. Ooh, that was a poke. Rontavius Atkins, number one for Western Michigan. Nice poke coming out of the secondary. You can see that ball come ejected out of it right there. Austin Lewis. Austin Lewis caused that fumble. Guys playing hard, running the ball. Little trickeration by the Spartans. Actually, wasn't Austin. He was late. He was late in there, but good hustle by the Broncos. Listen to this place, Rock. 39-yard line. Western Michigan back in business. Terrell to throw. He's going to go for it. Downfield. Lewis can't bring it in. I'm sorry, Davis. Had a chance. I like the call. You got a little emotion. Go right after him. Big play. Chance to capture momentum. See Corey Davis. Got to make that grab. Big time players make big time plays and big time games. You got the number five team at home trying to come up with something special. And the groan of disgruntledness from the fans who thought maybe there should have been an interference flag there. Terrell throws again, this time coming near side. Braverman back in the game, he dropped it. Wow. You're not going to see both of those much this year. Those guys are two pretty good receivers and Braverman. Good to see him back in the game because that looked like a tough, a real tough knee injury that he had before. 
Little wheel route on the outside. It's, it's a tough catch looking back over your shoulders like that, but you got to make that catch. Darian Harris, linebacker, who's a really great player, one of the team captains, running with Braverman down the field there with no help with the safety. Two shots down the field, come up empty, sets up third and long. Here comes the six-man pressure. Terrell gets outside, throws it outside. No shot to complete that one. It'll set up fourth down. Good job getting rid of it. Here's what we talked about before right here. Three guys down, and then they're going to bring all three of these, add six to it, and they're going to only cover with five. A lot of pressure on the protection. Does the job getting out, getting rid of it. Do not take sacks. Field position game here. P.J. trying to pin him and make him drive the field. Jay Schroeder on the punt. Too deep. So for the third time, a Western Michigan possession ends in the punt. That one had a couple really interesting moments, but they don't get any points out of it. Their opening game of the season tonight here in Western Michigan to potentially a spot in the college football playoff. Spartans lead 20 to 7 over the Western Carolina Broncos, taking over the ball on their own 20 yard line. Five man line by the Broncos again, trying to stop that running game early on against the, the Spartans. Connor Cook looking to throw, gets hit as he throws, has a receiver downfield. Josiah Price, who had the last touchdown grab for Michigan State, hauls in a long pass from Cook. There's his trusty tight end coming out there on the corner route. Five man line. Gerald Holmes there, see, misses the block, the running back. Connor takes a little bit of shot. So running back, it's not just carrying the ball. you got to learn pass protection, too. Hook to throw again, wide open down the center of the field. Price with another grab and another shot at moving the chains. Great little play action. Got Holmes coming across right. Josiah Price working back down the left hash. Good play action scheme makes it tough on the defense. Here's Gerald Holmes to run. And he'll get down near the 30-yard line before he's hit and wrapped up there and dropped to the ground. Nice game, though, for Holmes. Well, if you're a fine fan of multiple offense, you have to love what Michigan State does. You've got a lot of formations, motion, shifting, a variety of plays. It's like the great football smorgasbord. Holmes cuts back, finds a little room. Carries a man with him before he's finally stood up. Hit there by Robert Spillane, number 10 for Western Michigan. Robert Spillane had four sacks last year. Number 10 for the Broncos. Plays outside backer, 6'2", 235. He blitzes. He's made some plays in this game. Another one of those guys as a sophomore, a true sophomore, getting a lot of time for P.J. Spartans moving the chains quickly on this drive. That's Damian Terry, one of the backup quarterbacks. He's been in the game a couple of times at it. Receiver, this time he takes the direct snap and runs the option play off the left side. Yeah, he's a sophomore, very athletic. Comes in at 6'3", 235. Of course, everybody's got that some form of wildcat formation. Connor Cook lined up a wide receiver. Don't think the Spartans playing against Oregon next week are trying to show a few things to make their defense think. <laughs> Cook with time to throw. Breaking to the outside and just off the fingertips of McGarrett Kings who had a step and a shot at a touchdown. Really nice throw and timing. Good protection again up front. Paul? You know, Alan, yesterday Head coach P.J. Flack told us, if Connor Cook is Batman, we have to let Batman beat us alone. He just can't have a Robin. But the bad news for Western Michigan, looks like Michigan State might have three or four Robins. Madre London, you got these wide receivers like McGarrett Kings and Shelton all getting into the mix. Tons of talent in the skill position for Michigan State. And Cook with plenty of time to throw and a grab there. 
Zamor at seven for Western Michigan was looking for an offensive interference flag, but A.J. Troop calls in the ball and gets a first down. Good poise. Look at Connor get off his primary, going backside. He sees man coverage. They're really trying to go fast down here in the red zone, particularly after they get a first down. Going to take a look at this catch here. I'll give him a catch. Looks like that hand is under it. I'm with you, Alan, but I'm usually at odds with the officials. I don't know. I, usually, <laughs> I don't usually see it how they see it. See that left hand? He's in control of the ball there. Looks like he's under it. Looks like there's no ball movement. Yep. Big cradle, re rule the catch. Hey, Troop, Dave. another receiver, comes in at 6'2", 218. It's very tough when you get that kind of size. Even you can be right on him as a DB, but can't make the play. Further review, the ruling on the field stands with the reception, first and goal, Michigan State. All right, we heard that announcement from uh, referee Jerry McGinn. Very, very quickly, the Spartans down the field. Three for four. Connor Cook on this drive passing, 54 yards in the air. And now it's a first and goal at the eight. Let's think about how quickly some momentum in this game swung. That last offensive possession by Western Michigan. The two shots in the end zone that came so close were toward the end zone. There's Holmes. In standing up. Touchdown Spartans. Really having a lot of success right here on this side. One of the fly sweep coming back here, coming back the other way, pulling both the guard and tackle. Ends up being the backup in there, Benny McGowan getting some snaps in that old line, doing a nice job pulling outside. Conflict of assignment there, Alan. You got the motion going one way, ball going the other, makes it tough on the defense. Geiger's point after is through. And an eight-play, 80-yard drive. Two minutes and 37 seconds, capped by the Gerald Holmes eight-yard touchdown run. And Michigan State showing a lot of variety and a lot of muscle in this first half. In every game live at home or on the go, simply download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. A beautiful night for the opening night of college football season here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's Michigan State, the number five team in the country, leading Western Michigan 27 to seven. Look at that sky. Looking at the field, it's been a lot prettier for the Spartan fans than it's been for the Broncos fans, though they have had their opportunities. I think P.J. Fleck will look back and see a couple of chances to put some points on the board that went astray for the Broncos. This man's been responsible for a lot of the flash in the game for Western Michigan. Darius Phillips ran the opening kickoff back 72 yards. Then later on, he ran one back out of the end zone, 101 yards for a touchdown. This one he'll take at the two. I wouldn't be kicking it back to that guy. Not going to get very far on this one. Monte Nicholson there for the Spartans. The wrap up and a takedown, and Western Michigan will go to work from pretty deep inside its own territory, about the nine yard line. Monte Nicholson starts at safety for Michigan State, comes in and makes a tackle. There you see the yards. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Darius Phillips, 183 yards, 44. Western Michigan did a better job last time out. Let's see if they continue to mix it up. Short throws, gotta be a little patient. In there running the football, get the ball out of hands, don't take sacks, be productive. Again, a couple of deep throws downfield, last possession 
that uh, one couldn't be pulled in, the other just bounced off a shoulder. There's the uh, fake end around and a handoff inside, and Paul, that's uh, got to be regretful moments on that uh, Western Michigan sideline when he saw those balls hit the ground. Indeed, Alan. Two drops by the top two wide receivers from Western Michigan, Daniel Braverman and Corey Davis last series. They looked dejected on the sideline. Head coach P.J. Fleck ran over to them, told them, they're playing you straight man. You have to take it. And as he left, he said, or in the water, baby. Movement inside. Back the Broncos up half the distance. Ball start. Number 52. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. John Kenoy, the freshman center, who was one of the question marks about this Western Michigan line, though his offensive coordinator, Kurt Shiraka, told us that he came in in camp. They weren't sure what they were going to do at center. By the third day of camp, the true freshman was in and has earned the respect of his line mates. Makes all the calls for the protection schemes on the front line. Terrell got out of his own end zone, but didn't get away. Riley Bullo among the posse that met at the quarterback. Zach's got to have that internal clock going on. He just does not have time, particularly backed up against his own end zone. Good pressure up front. Riley sees it, attacks it. That's better in instincts at the linebacker spot. Kind of just spying the quarterback there, too, huh? Terrell can run the ball. So third and long here for him. Here's that nasty 30 front here. Look out. Six guys coming. No, they bring three, drop eight. Gonna throw deep. Far side, Corey Davis. Wow. Only takes one, baby. Only takes one. Four yards and a first down near midfield for Western Michigan. Spartan's been rolling through a lot of DBs out there. Jermaine Edmondson getting his opportunity. Jarvion Franklin trying to move the pile. Franklin, the first freshman in MAC history to win Rookie of the Year and Offensive Player of the Year in the same season. Did that last year. But, uh, the Spartans have been tough on 31 tonight. 1,500 yards. He comes in at 220 pounds, and you see how he can sort of move the pile, too. He gets contact, pushes it a little bit, and falls forward, makes a good gain out of it. Harold pulls it out. Going to take another shot downfield. This time, the Spartan defenders stride for stride. It was good. Demetrius Cox in yeah. there this time. Got to have a short memory out there if you're going to play corner because the way the Spartans play, they get up in your face, they press you. Now, a lot of it's not true man. They're going to read routes. It might be quarters, but you're basically, in effect, playing man coverage. You're going to get up there and challenge, and, hey, that's going to happen sometimes, but you got to, you got to, make, a, you got to make a recovery. And the Broncos get the first down and keep the chains going. Here's Braverman. Makes a move. Got the first down yardage. Daniel Braverman, the redshirt junior from Miramar, Florida, with the line of scrimmage move to get first down yardage. After the screen catch. outside. See right here, Riley Bull overruns it. You've got to cap the ball. There's always got to be a guy on the ball inside, outside. You've got to know where your leverage and your health is. And you see Riley overrunning it. He had Cox sitting outside. He's the outside leverage guy. You got to stay inside out on that. He knows he's a veteran player. Got an injury with Monte Nicholson right there. Monte Nicholson coming off the field slowly, and that the reason for the stoppage in play. And so the chains do move for Western Michigan. They're into Spartan territory. Just under five minutes to go in this second quarter. 
after his pregame speech, if they can get a touchdown here before halftime, I can only imagine what P.J. Fleck will say to his team in the Bronco locker room. It doesn't matter if they score. You know what his, <laughs> you know what his speech is going to be. It's going to be awesome. We want to be in there again. Zach Terrell throws near side this time out of the backfield. Franklin with a spin move and first down yardage before he's hit by Darian Hicks and a few other Spartans. One of the areas that Franklin worked on improving his game in this offseason is receiving the ball out of the backfield. And the Spartans coming now. They're playing straight quarters. They bring someone off the edge, rushing five, but playing quarters and two under. That's what leaves an open zone, and then they got to rally up and tackle, but they're counting on getting to the quarterback and disrupting the play. Little different wrinkle there for the Spartans on the back end. Kind of cool stuff. A lot more yardage in the second quarter for the Broncos than in all of the first. Helps him hit that big throw. Terrell throws, grabbed again by Davis. He's running, he's inside the five-yard line before he's grabbed and brought down Corey Davis, the star of this drive for Western Michigan. Another big receiver at 6'3", 205. P.J. coached receivers at uh, Tampa Bay. He said he'd take him at Tampa as his number three. A couple of years' experience, he'd be the number two guy in the league. That says a lot. 6'3", 205, junior from Wheaton, Illinois. First and goal, Western Michigan. Now's when you got that big back. You got a big five-man lineup there again for the Spartans, but you're probably in four-down territory. Let your 220-pound guy lean on him a little bit. Franklin inside. The pile moves slightly, but ever so slightly. Damon Knox with the contact there for Michigan State. Drive that started at their own nine-yard line and is now down at the number five team in the country's four. Nicholson checks back in. Corey Davis lines up inside this time right here. He's the go-to guy. Matched up against the safety. Pressure. Harold throws quickly. Franklin couldn't get spun around in time to get the ball. A little flat route there to Franklin on Darian Harris, the captain, number 45 for the Spartans. Another really good football player. Matched up. The Spartans missing Ed Davis, who could have been an All-American candidate. Blew up his knee early on in camp. He plays the other side. Darian plays what they call the star position. Four down territory right here. Eight-man front, got to be working outside. To the corner. Incomplete. In the direction of Corey Davis. Demetrius Cox there defending for the Spartans. It brings up fourth down. Great job, Demetrius Cox, a.k.a. Day-Day. Playing the ball in the hands. Really good technique. Get your hand inside the receiver's hand. Get that ball out. So Andrew Haldeman comes on to kick. And slides it inside that right upright. What a drive for the Broncos. They don't get it in the end zone, but they do get points on the board. Spartans by 17 late in the second quarter on this opening week of the season. Number 20, Wisconsin, and number three, Alabama. Tomorrow at 8 on ABC, streaming live at home and on the go on Watch ESPN. There's this whole opening weekend capped off by Virginia Tech and Ohio State. So a 12-play, 88-yard drive has Western Michigan on the board after the 22-yard field goal. And it's 27-10 with 2.46 left to go in this second quarter. Great to see the Broncos have a little success and inject a little life uh, back into their step. R.J. Shelton can't field that one cleanly in his own end zone. Pick it up. It'll be a touchback, and they'll start at their own 20-yard line when we come back to Kalamazoo in a moment. Crowd and the opening weekend of college football as number five Michigan State travels west to Kalamazoo in western Michigan. The Spartans leading. 27 to 10, late here in this second quarter. 
Got the freshman back in at tailback number three, L.J. Scott. And he's got the ball. And he spins off one, he bounces off another, and he's finally knocked down by Ronald Zimmort as we check in with Brendan. Alan, thanks very much. Back in studio with Kevin Carter. Uh, we'll take a look more at this one at halftime. Not without their chances, the Broncos. A few drop passes score could have been closer, but we'll see what happens second half. Uh, not the only top five team in action is Michigan State. We'll also check in on Baylor at the half. Alan, back to you. Brendan, Kevin, thanks. Spartans looking to see if they could put a few more points on the board here. Connor Cook under center. I wonder if Kevin Carter could crack this defensive line lineup for the Spartans right now. I know he was a baller back at Florida. Look at the drive there from Scott. It's impressive. 230 pounds of raw steel out of the true freshman. He was the uh, number 93 player in the ESPN uh, recruiting nation roster in 2014. The seventh rated running back in the country. And as uh, Coach Mark D'Antonio said, he was going to get his ears wet tonight. Had a great camp. And he's been one of three running backs that have shared the duties by series in this one for Michigan State. Cook the throw. Knocked away at the last second. There's Darius Phillips again. 14 for Western Michigan. He's been... Nice play. They've been, been throwing that flag route. Yeah, they've been throwing that flag, that corner route a bunch. Now you got to be careful of the double move. You wonder at what point uh, does Michigan State, again, really solid protection, throwing the ball on time. Good job breaking on the football by the former wide receiver, now corner and kick returner specialist. Pressure on Cook. He throws it up in the direction, but incomplete. Josiah Price, the intended receiver, on the far side. There were some people wearing brown shirts that were in a hurry to get to the quarterback. There's a better move by Connor Cook. Not taking the sack. You see the pressure coming up the middle. Cross pop inside. He doesn't hesitate. He knows where to go with it. Turns it loose where only his guy has a chance. That's a better move. Jason Silva. In at the middle linebacker position after Grant De Palma injured earlier in the game and Silva with the pressure. And so it brings up third down and ten for Michigan State. Inside a minute and a half. Cook throws over the top of Aaron Burbridge. And the Bronco defense holds. And it'll be fourth down. Broncos bringing three, drop an eight that time. Squeeze down some of the lanes. Those are the throws down the road. If they're going to beat Ohio State and Oregon and make a run, and he's going to go to New York, got to make that. You see Mark D'Antoni right there. I love this guy. This guy's all about raising men. He does things right. Tremendous amount of integrity. Came to Michigan State with a plan. Stuck with a plan. Mark Hollis, the AD. They built great facilities. A real solid culture and foundation at Michigan State. Jake Hartbarger's punts a boomer taken by Daniel Braverman. Finds a little seam before he's wrapped up and brought down at about the 26 yard line. Plenty of time left. You, you can drive the ball with one timeout with a minute 15 from right here. There's a minute seven left. You got a no huddle team. They do have different tempos. Broncos get something going. Take another shot with Corey Davis deep. We watched yesterday at. Uh, the Broncos walk through practice. They really they practiced the two minute offense hard yesterday in all kind of different scenarios and situations. Yeah, I love that there were guys moving. They were running around. It was fast paced, getting a sweat going. Some teams have elected now to go fast the day before the game and go slow two days before that. Kind of the track mentality. Zach Terrell, the quarterback, 12 of 20 for 119 yards, one interception. He's not going to get. Anything going there. Dropped by Demetrius Cooper. Demetrius Cooper, ton of potential for this team. Another 6'5", long, rangy guy. Gives him some depth in that D-line. Terrell throws off the hands of Braverman, and it falls incomplete. Stops the clock at 47 seconds in the half. Seen two drops by that kid today. You're probably not going to see the rest of the year. 
You got to be careful on this down now because if you don't get something productive, depends what happens then. Michigan State gets a chance to maybe get some points before the end of the half. Terrell sets, throws, first down yardage across the middle. There's Braverman again. This time he's got it. Here comes Terrell running up. Will they spike the ball or will they just throw it again? Michigan State was in the right coverage, but throwing it on time. and Great play, great direction. Terrell throws again across the middle. Again to Braverman. And far sideline, P.J. Fleck will step in front of the side judge and call a timeout with 30 seconds to go on the ball at midfield. Michigan State opting to go a little more with coverage in this drive instead of pressure. They talked about the culture in Mark D'Antonio, and while we're looking at him here, here, Coach, you go through the Michigan State facility and the sayings on the wall and, and the way that they go about their program uh, just has earned a lot of respect in a lot of corners. You're a better man when you come out the other side. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Both of these guys, I, give, I tip my hat to both of them there because they're trying to raise better young people, better men, as well as great football people and, and doing it the right way. And, Coach D'Antonio talked about when he came to Michigan State, one of the reasons he came was their commitment and the people there and how they built it and what they're about. I had a chance before the uh, game to talk to Mark Hollis, the AD. Tom Izzo was down there just off of his trip to Italy with his basketball team. And it's just a rich, solid culture. And both of these programs are a credit to college football. I was going through the locker room yesterday, and every guy taught, said hi to for Western Michigan. I said, hey, how you doing? Elite, elite. Yep. Well, imagine your son going into a program where the coach is teaching him how do you be elite every day in every way. Not just on the football field. Here's a little pressure. Look out. Down he goes. Malik McDowell, number four. Now, normally number four is in 6'6", 275. Freshman All-American. Pressure over coverage, baby. Pressure over coverage. Well, the scoreboard there could have been a lot closer. We talked about this earlier. If not for a couple of balls that could have uh, swung a little momentum in the favor of the people wearing the brown shirts. That one to Corey Davis. This one to Daniel Braverman with space in front of him. Tough one for Daniel. He's dropped a couple. But he's such a steady Eddie guy for the Broncos. And hey, in games like this, at all games, it comes down to three plays, and you're trying to capture those three plays somewhere within there, but you make a couple of those, and the momentum gets turned. There have been a few turnovers in here. So a third down and long here for Western Michigan to try and keep the drive alive after Terrell was dropped a minute ago by McDowell. Timeout, Michigan State, second of the half. Be a 30-second charge, timeout. So the Spartans saw something that they didn't like, and we'll go back about it. Yeah, this uh, both front lines for Michigan State, uh, well, well discussed in the preseason about the strength of their offensive uh, line and the defensive line as well. These guys are big, they're nasty, they get pressure on quarterbacks, and they can stuff the run all by themselves too. That was one of the things that the Western Michigan defensive coaches talked to us about. This front four, they can stop the run all by themselves. Yeah, and you got you got three fifth-year seniors playing in there. So not only the talented, they're experienced. Lawrence Thomas was a great inside player last year. Number eight, he's playing D-in. Joel Heath steps up inside as a defensive tackle. They go about, you know, 270 to 300 across the front. Lawrence Thomas, number eight, played fullback for Michigan State when they were in the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. And we haven't even called Shalik Calhoun's number yet. Michigan State looks like they opt to drop eight again. Downfield, 
Terrell throws across Braverman with the ball and a first down. Got a penalty in the backfield. Flag just came in. Like it's going to be roughing maybe. Michigan State's continuing to march. Personal foul. Offense. Hands to the face. Number 77. 15 yard penalty. Third down. Ah. Shakuma Okora four again that right tackle. That one hurts. And trying to battle, trying to battle, just got to reposition your hands. That's Calhoun. I said we hadn't called his, his number. All you got to do anything possible against Calhoun. I'll tell you what, it's not easy to block that guy. Now you've got 18 seconds left, and instead of being around the 40-yard line going in, you are a long way back. Third and forever. Braverman. Tried to find a little running room, stepped on the sideline on the spin move there. Well, he's being smart. He's trying to run the clock out there. There's an experienced player. And that was the whole goal of that play was just to run the clock out. So smart move by Daniel. Now from a 101-yard kickoff return to some very entertaining moments. The first half done here in Kalamazoo as we send it back to Brendan Fitzgerald in our studio. It's kickoff week. Celebrate the State Series with a little fireworks here in Kalamazoo at halftime. 27-10, the number five Michigan State Spartans leading the Western Michigan Broncos here at Waldo Stadium on the WMU campus. Alan Bestwick, Coach Dan Hawkins back in Kalamazoo. We talked about the Michigan State Spartans at the top of the game, having some questions to answer, replacing production that they lost at receiver and at running back. And the Hawk first half, they tried a number of different running backs a series at a time. By committee right now, got over 100 yards rushing, doing a nice job right there. Good rotation going through with Holmes and Scott and uh, Madre. Those guys are going to prove to be really the balance of the running attack. You see Mark D'Antonio there. He's got a ton of guys at receiver and running back. He's trying to figure out who's who and where's where. But that's his group of running backs right there. I think that's a solid group. And on the other side of the ball for Western Michigan, uh, they've uh, had their opportunities. And uh, just a couple of things here and there are the difference between P.J. Flex team being a little bit closer to the number five team in the country than what they are right now. Second half starting off with Western Michigan getting the ball. Sorry, Hawk. No, I just, yeah, the, the interception down close here led to seven points. The drop ball, particularly by Braverman, probably would have led to points. And then the missed field goal, uh, we always say three plays a game, and it's it, the margin is very thin. So building a program right here now you come out the second half the first half did you come to win the second half you know did you come to play let's see what the broncos are all about here down by 17. that'll sail over the head of rj shelton and the spartans will start on their 20-yard line paul carcatero is on the sidelines tonight well, Alan, I just caught up with P.J. Fleck, head coach at Western Michigan. He said he is still concerned about how physical Michigan State is at the point of attack. The big boy's up front, so what's he going to do? He's going to disguise a lot of things, a lot of stunts. Offensively, down 17, it's all about feeding the rock to Corey Davis, so superstar. He said it's 0-0 in terms of Corey Davis. We have to get him the ball. And then I assume he said, do you row the boat as he walked away? Yes? So P.J. Fleck looking on as his team on defense here against Connor Cook and the Spartan offense in business at the 25. Madre London with the first carry of the second half. Some good yardage there. Hit eventually by uh, 11 Austin Lewis, the linebacker for the Broncos, but not before London picks up about six. Haven't seen the home run ball yet by the Spartans. Of course, Jeremy Langford, the 1,500-yard back, gone. Le'Veon Bell a couple years ago, now in the NFL, trying to see if one of those backs can hit that home run, hit a crease, 
get that next gear, explode through the hole, and take it to the house and make a long touchdown run. Unbalanced motion, again, start of the half with that. London inside, gets through the first contact, gets across the 35, and picks up a first down for the Spartans. Coach, you talked about the running backs for the Spartans. Connor Cook, uh, we showed you his first half numbers there a second ago. There they are again. Thoughts on what you've seen from the quarterback? It's tough because if you're a normal quarterback, you're thinking, okay, not bad. Not throwing interceptions, not taking sacks. Pretty good. But this guy's a Heisman hopeful. He's got a team that's ranked number five trying to get into the playoff picture. You need better than 50% by your fifth-year senior. Started off solid, then went on a streak of uh, incompletions. Did Cook. Wound up at that 50% rate. As the ball comes back this way, once again, it's London. And he's out across the 40-yard line. I love what the Spartans bring. This is fake draw or fake pass, quick throw, wraparound draw, go the other way. These guys run some cool stuff on offense now. I'm telling you, well, there's got to be some in-depth walkthroughs and meetings because none of this stuff is simple. And to have a good old line that can wrap and pull and get around, man, that's a good deal. Five-man line again by the Broncos trying to hold up against that rushing attack. Cook throws, looking far side, a spin around backwards. McGarrett King de uh, defended there by Ronald Zamort, and the ball goes incomplete. Leaving him on an island out there. That's the name of the game. Ronald's one of their better players. You know he's going to be tested. Man coverage, pressure again to the play action. You got to play the hands in that situation. When you're playing man, you can't always see the ball and you can't see the quarterback. You got to react to the receiver's eyes and the receiver's hands. So third and five here for the Spartans to keep their first drive of the second half going. These first two drives are always so huge in how the game turns out. Cook throws outside. Shelton catches. Fights for the sticks, and it looks like he'll get the first down. Defended on the outside but is able to find a way to get the first down yardage. Good little stiff arm. This is the benefit of having a bigger receiver. Can be physical, tough to get him down. Run after the catch. The old Bill Walsh thing used to say, you, the run is half the yardage. You throw for half and run for half. Ian Thomas had a shot at him, but Shelton was able to run around and move the chains. Again, you see the Spartans shifting the tight end, motioning. Stuff is top on a defense. London stacked up there. Jason Silva, 42 for Western Michigan, he is able to make the stop and a short gain for Michigan State. Silva getting some pops in there because of the departure of Grant De Palma, one of our impact players for this game. Real solid inside player, kind of the captain of the defense. And this is for all those young football players out there. You're only one play away, so you better be watching tape. You better be practicing hard. You better know what's going on because you're going to get your opportunity. And when the door opens, you better be ready to go. The report from Paul is that it was a groin injury, the uh, determination for De Palma that has kept him on the sideline. Cook throws downfield in a crowd. Kings can't bring it in. Darius Phillips, 14 in the area, as well as Rontavius Atkins. Ill-advised, Connor. Ill-advised. Every coach's wife knows don't throw the ball late down the middle. Little half roll off the power. Trying to throw the ball back into the middle there. Got double coverage. You, you did just say every coach's wife knows? Exactly. They know. They've heard it a thousand times. <laughs> Do not throw the ball late over the middle. Spartan seven for nine on third down tonight. They need eight here. Even Becky D'Antonio sitting in the crowd. Happy birthday. It was her birthday yesterday. Cook throws. He's got the first down. This time on the far sideline, DeAnthony Arnett gets the grab, and they'll move the chains. Nice little rope over there. Smash concept. Hitch on the outside. Running the corner in behind it. Throwing that ball on the line. That was a good throw. Arnett, yet another senior transfer from Tennessee. Here comes London. Spins off a hit, falls forward for a few yards. 
Rontavius Atkins and Jason Silva there. Yeah, you're right, Alan. Falls forward for a few yards, and they keep doing that, and that's that's impressive, and that wears on a team, and that's where your extra yards come. That probably would have been a four-yard gain right there. It ends up being six. Top Fighting for the block, David Curl on the inside, 68 for Western Michigan. Makes contact in the backfield and sets up another third down. Keep waiting for Connor to pull one onto these zone reads. He's not getting a lot of attention outside. Ah, here comes our Wildcat quarterback, Damian Terry, back in the game, number six. Let's see if we're going to get him some reps at the Wildcat and line up Connor outside. Nope. Look out, double pass. Look out, quarterback at wide receiver. Everybody on defense ought to be yelling at you're over there. Hook throws inside. Tough catch, but a good one by R.J. Shelton. And he'll come up with the first down. A little simple stick route there. And they might want to get him in on just a few pass plays here. Sneak him in later, get the double pass working. Love what Spartans are doing on offense. I'll tell you, this is a lot of variety, a lot of stuff. Some people don't like the huddle up. Some people don't like all the tight ends and fullbacks, but from an X's and O standpoint, it's cool. 12th play of the drive. Broncos bring numbers. Cook has time. Throws downfield in the direction of Paul Lang, 83. The tight end of the fall incomplete. Cook catch a hand on a helmet there or something. He's kind of grabbing it a little bit. Doing a nice job again, throwing that ball where only your guy can catch it. They're loving that smash concept, which is a hitch by the outside guy, like a four or five yard area, running the corner in behind it. Tough, particularly down here in the red area. Rose got some running room and in for the touchdown. DeAnthony Arnett got away from the defender and the Spartans score. Number seven, Ronald Zamor gets kind of caught inside. Looked like he was almost trying to blitz and fake a corner blitz. You see him way inside. Right here. Yeah, just a little lazy with his eyes. Lazy with the eyes, good. That's a good veteran move by Connor Cook, kind of seeing that, throwing the whole shot. Geiger's point after kick, nice grab by the uh, hold and gets it down. And so it is 34 to 10, Spartans, the senior, Arnett. With the 21-yard touchdown reception, capping off a 13-play, 75-yard drive that ate up five and a half minutes of this third quarter. The number five team in the country opens the second half with a solid march downfield. ESPN College Football, you can stream every game live, at home, or on the go. Just download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. Alan, back to you. Brendan, be a ton of football to watch on Watch ESPN and on the ESPN Networks this season. 450-plus college football games starting this week. College football kickoff. And tonight, the Celebrate the State Series. Developed back in 2009 by Michigan State Athletic Director Mark Hollis to support some of the other schools in the state at a time when uh, Michigan's economy was struggling greatly. They brought a pile of people here to Kalamazoo, Michigan State. And watching the Spartans lead the Western Michigan Broncos by 34 to 10 in this third quarter. Well, uh, uh, Hawk has uh, sayings. Coach speak, we'll call it. I call them Hawkisms. And one of his Hawkisms is three plays make the difference in a game. Here's the three that make the difference for the Broncos. Opening drive, missed field goal after the big long return. Then we come back to tip ball, the pick. This led to a touchdown by the Spartans. And then this drop by Daniel Braverman. You make those, you make those three plays whole different outlook and that's why sometimes Alan people say oh we were close we were right there we were within seven we were in three that's not what it's about you got to capture those plays and get over the top 
And that comes in meetings, practice, film, weight room. Where are you going to capture those single plays? Zach Terrell, the quarterback for Western Michigan. Throws outside his running back, Jarvion Franklin, out of the backfield. Takes a hit and keeps on going. He gets out to the first down sticks. It was R.J. Williamson that made the hit on him for Michigan State. Good wrinkle. Getting Jarvion running the wheel route. Coming outside, down the sidelines. Nice job by Zach putting the ball on him. Terrell in the uh, first half. 15 for 24 with one interception. Remember big number 84, Corey Davis, the six foot three wide receiver for Western Michigan has been their big weapon tonight. Keep an eye on him. The things, the stat that stings for Zach in the, in the first half is the sacks. Here's the ball in the direction of Davis, but he was forced inside and kind of off of his line by Vionte Copeland, the defender for the Spartans, and uh, the ball went over his head. Yeah, normally you end up getting outside on that fade route. Zach would like to have that one back. You get single high, you'd love to give your guy a chance, especially a guy that's his size of Corey Davis at 6'3". Give him a chance to jump ball and go get it against single high coverage. So Davis up top of the screen now on second and 10. Franklin will get the handoff. And uh, after the... Broncos had really nothing going on the ground for most of the first half. A few yards there. Sons the cloud of dust for Franklin. Two total yards rushing in the first half. Now that took away there was sack yardage in there. They did get some run running going in the, in the second quarter. Giving Franklin a blow here to get him out of the game. Offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraka for the Broncos told us that they'd know if they were able to get some running game going if Franklin got 20 touches tonight. Well, he's touched the ball seven times so far. Here's the voodoo up front that you don't want to see. They throw the quick screen to Davis. He's got some room. Gets outside, gets the first down. Demetrius Cox knocks him out of bounds. But the big weapon, Corey Davis, that uh, Coach Flex said they have to keep getting the ball in this second half. Just Simple got another smoke one there. Screen, smoke screen outside, quick screen. Love it. Just get your guys the ball. Get your dudes the rock any way you can. Hand it to them on the fly sweep. Go quick screen, whatever it takes. There you go, Paul. Well, Hawk, you're absolutely right. When you talk to P.J. Fleck, what he says about his star receiver, Corey Davis, so strong and sudden was the word he used. His mentality and his physicality, adjusting on the run is what this guy does better than anyone in the MAC. Franklin tries to get outside, just got whacked. Looked like he might have taken a knee on the helmet there from R.J. Williamson, and Franklin is down at the end of that run. When you play safety for the Spartans, you are a run-stopping machine in quarters coverage, which is four deep. As soon as those two safeties see a run action, they're going to come downhill and be a thumper. Jarvion Franklin, the sophomore running back, down on the ground, and an injury timeout here in Kalamazoo. For Franklin. Prime time is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Jarvion Franklin, the star running back for the Western Michigan Broncos, up and off the field with some assistance back on the bench after it looked like taking a shot to the back of the head or neck here at the end of that last play. So a second down for Western Michigan here. Jamari Bogan is in the game, 32, the running back. And Zach Terrell could not find enough time to get away. Riley Bulla eventually caught up to the quarterback after some pressure sent him scrambling, and he had to pull the ball down. Spartans playing quarter, quarter, half. Means four deep on one side, half coverage on the other side. Riley Bulla sitting back in there as soon as Zach starts to take off. He's going to come hunting, and he's done it. He's got a couple sacks tonight. Third down and nine. Off coverage at the bottom of the screen. Normally, Michigan State's a press group. Look at all those guys moving around up there. This makes it tough on the old line. 84, top of the screen. Coming this way, he gets the ball. Davis 
pursued, but he gets to the first down marker, trying to wrestle him out of bounds was Monte Nicholson, but the big receiver for the Broncos gets it done again. Great pickup by the O-line. Nice job sliding that front, running the shallow. Ends up getting passed off to the safety. They're reading routes and trying to match routes there. So as soon as the receiver goes inside, the corner passes him to the safety, and Zach does a nice job picking it up. Coach P.J. Fleck feels that Corey Davis is one of the top ten wide receivers in the country. He's going to get the ball again. Just gets it inside of contact from Demetrius Cox. And a flag down in the offensive backfield. Love it. Don't overthink it. Just get your guy the rock. Personal foul. foul. Offense, number 77. Hands to the face. 15-yard penalty. First down. That is the second hands to the face personal foul on Chuck Wuma Okorafor. Come on, Chuck. He's had the difficulty of scoring against over here. Calhoun all night. Guy's new to football. Got tons of potential. He is up against one of the best DNs in the country. Just got to be able to reposition your hands. He'll learn that as he gets some experience. Things are happening pretty fast for him right now. Little, it's easy up here in the booth to pick it up. Not so easy down there. I don't want to be trying to block Calhoun, who gets pressure on the quarterback, but the ball is dumped off, and it is uh, Bogan who has the grab. And we check in with Paul. Well, Alan. Jarvian Franklin, Mac Offensive Player of the Year, Mac Rookie of the Year, first guy in history ever to do it in the league. He's their star running back. He injured his head. Trainers took his helmet. He wants to go back in the game. They're not allowing him right now. If I get another update, I'll let you know. Yeah, that's smart in this day and age. Guy gets dinged in the head. It's one thing if it's your hand or your foot or your, but boy, when it's your head, well, and, and the reality of it is, too, you know, it's, it's a 24-point game against Michigan State. You've got your conference schedule still ahead. Why even consider taking a chance? As Braverman gets the ball and is wrestled to the sideline and ridden out of bounds by Darian Harris for Michigan State. Well, it's one thing to play up in a Power 5 uh, team, as in Michigan State, but they're also one of the more physical teams. You're not just going to play against better people. You're going to play up against physical people. So you don't want to lose guys for your team when you get into the conference schedule. And you see right there, you got Michigan State, you got Ohio State. That is heavyweight boxing right there. And by the way, the Sun Belt Conference champions Georgia Southern next week. That's before you run the gauntlet of the MAC, which for the MAC West and this uh, Western Michigan team includes road games at Toledo and at Northern Illinois late in the season. Harrell hit as he throws, but he gets the ball outside to Michael Henry, who gets his first grab of the night. Not enough to move the chains, but gets a good chunk of yardage. We'll see if they go for it here. I think they're going to. Zach has done a nice job finding windows. Michigan kind of playing Tampa 2 there, where the middle backers run into the hole. He's doing a nice job finding the windows in zone coverage. Got Corey Davis up at the top here. He's the go-to guy. Timeout. Western Michigan. First of the half. Clock was running down. Took a little while to get up and try and get set. So uh, interesting down and distance situation coming up here. Defense get a stop on an upcoming fourth down after a Western Michigan timeout. 24-point game here in Kalamazoo. Fourth down and five. Yeah. And the Broncos to go for it. Crowd in the line of scrimmage. Expect pressure in there. That's been what's worked for them. They have not been great in zone tonight. Zach Terrell has found some. Ah, little audible. You audible, I audible. Backing out of it. 84 Davis, top of the screen. Terrell throws inside and in a crowd of receivers. Carrington Thompson comes up with the catch and a fourth down conversion for Western Michigan. Big time pickup. Michigan State brought four. Trusted his footwork, back foot hits, get it out. The matchup for Western Michigan at wide receiver against the DBs for Michigan State is a good one. A veteran Bronco squad going against an inexperienced group from Michigan State. 
So first down at the 20-yard line on what has been an impressive drive so far for the Broncos, despite the penalty earlier. Here's Bogan. In it running back after Franklin went out injured, hit by Joel Heath, dragged along, but a nice pickup on first down. Zach very efficient. He was efficient in the first half. The, the sacks really hurt him, but he's getting the ball out. Jamari Bogan in the game. He gives up about 50 pounds uh, that Jarvion Franklin bought. And interesting here, Bogan had to go out of the game because his helmet came off at the end of that play. Here's the fastest guy on the team, number five, Levante Bellamy, a true freshman. Gets the ball, slides through, a quick hit by John Reschke, but is dragged down after a short gain. Sets up another third down for the Broncos. John Reschke there, number 33, stepping in at the money backer spot. Ed Davis, your All-American candidate, out with a knee injury, so rescue Chris Fry being asked to uh, step up and fill that money backer spot. Drive that started at their own 25 and included that 15-yard personal foul. Now the uh, 14th play coming up here for Western Michigan. Zach Terrell, the quarterback. Will throw. They handle the pressure. Gets outside, gets the ball into the hands of number three, Fabian Johnson, their third down back. He's going to be a couple of yards shy, and we'll see if they go for it for a second time on fourth down in this drive. Yeah, you think if they went before, they're going to go again. You might as well. You're down by 24. You're here to play. So here it is again, another fourth down try. Movement. Might turn out to be a lot longer try than it was going to be. False start. Offense, number 70. Five yard penalty, fourth down. The left tackle, Willie Beavers. Still go for it? Yeah. Why not? You're here to play. Willie Beavers, left tackle, number 70, 6'5", 309. Another guy that could be a late round pick in the National Football League. He's got 27 starts for the Broncos. He's a veteran in there. 30-second charge, timeout. Well, talk it over again. Why not? Worked last time. And really, when you look at the scoreboard, you get one here, fine. But if you don't, what do you got to lose if you're uh, P.J. Fleck? Minute to remind you about our action tomorrow here on ESPNU. The UTEP Miners give us our first opponent for the number 18-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. It's at 3.30 p.m. exclusively on ESPNU. And watch ESPN, a part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. Tell you what, even though the scoreboard has gotten a little spread out, what an atmosphere here. The student section at Waldo Stadium. The people buzzing around town, the tailgating, the crowds coming in, the number of people wearing green shirts in this crowd. Better Always run talk about sports being the front porch of your, your operation. And, you know, this is the thing, when it's done right, athletics can be such a magnificent spotlight on your university. Draw people, applicants, students, does a lot for the economy. This town is jumping, it's bumping. Um, Hats off to Michigan State for agreeing to come here and play. So fourth down and seven. They need the 10-yard line. The Michigan State fans seated in the grandstand behind this end zone trying to make a little disruptive noise. Pressure from the outside. Picked up. Terrell throws. Davis. Yeah. He got it. Touchdown. kind of pressure on quarterback Zach Terrell. All kinds of defense hanging all over. Corey Davis, and he found a way to haul it in. Pass interference. Defense, number 36. Penalty declined. Touchdown. Arjun Colquitt on the coverage there. I love great football. Fourth and long in the red zone. Michigan State brings it. Zach Terrell just delivers a strike. To his money receiver and he takes one of the chops as well that's good football 
Haldeman's point after try. He'll probably have to try it from a little bit farther back. Ball start. Offense. Number 65. Five yard penalty. Retry. PAT. Jackson Day, the backup center. And on special teams. The question at DB, Allen, coming into this game was big for the Spartans. And while I think they've got a few answers at running back, uh, we'll see. I think they need to know they need to go to work at receiver, uh, or covered receivers with their DBs, and in a hurry because they got the Ducks rolling into into town next week. Yeah, I want to talk about that Oregon game with you and what, as a coach, you might have scouted tonight if you were watching this team, and what if you were Mark D'Antonio, you might be trying to show the Ducks to keep them thinking. What a drive, 15 plays, 75 yards, took over seven and a half minutes off the clock. And the Western Michigan Broncos have put their 17th point on the board against number five, Michigan State. This shows me a lot about P.J. Fleck and about the program he's building because you don't come out, you're not a front runner, you're not good when it's good, you're not good when you're ahead, you're always good. And just like the kids yesterday when I said, how you doing, they said elite. They're trying to <laughs> practice and play elite every play. It doesn't matter what the score is. That's how you get to the next level. That's how the Spartans got to the next level. Well, very impressive drive put together there by uh, Western Michigan. And the P.J. Fleck, the ever endless bundle of energy on the sidelines. One of the youngest head coaches in uh, FBS football, the youngest head coach in FBS football, former college and professional player, has coached, starting as a graduate assistant at Ohio State, uh, was part of the Greg Schiano staff over at Rutgers, went with Schiano to Tampa Bay in the NFL, also coached at his alma mater, Northern Illinois, and then took his uh, first head coaching job here. Now in his third season at Western Michigan, his uh, Broncos pick to Finish second in the Mac West Division this year. Don't think for a minute they're willing to settle for second. Derek Mitchell to kick off. LJ Scott and RJ Shelton back deep for the Spartans. This will be Shelton who will let it bounce in the end zone. Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon, ESPNU brings you college football Sunday. We'll talk about the Heisman hopefuls. We'll talk about the championship contenders. It's the only show that ranks them all. College football Sunday on ESPNU. And watch ESPN on Sunday. Speaking of Heisman hopefuls, Connor Cook, the senior Michigan State quarterback, coming back onto the field. One of the nice things he's done, we always talk about a game manager and some people think that's a horrible moniker i don't as a coach you want a guy that gets the ball to the right people doesn't take sacks gets it to gerald holmes here holmes it, wrapped up and brought down when your quarterback gets you in and out of the right plays doesn't turn the ball over you can do a lot of good things uh, you got guys taking sacks throwing picks you know trying to force things that puts your offense in a tough situation one of the things that Coach D'Antonio said he wanted to see as continued growth from Connor Cook this year is more consistency. To throw. Cut back route on the far side. Aaron Burbridge gets the grab. And he will move the chains for the Spartans. Now, the other thing that, uh, that they said, uh, offensive coordinator Jim Bowman also added on that consistency. He said, but when you get to this level, you're measuring progress in inches, not yards. It's all in the details. It really is. Uh, I once had a receiver. We were trying to run a route at 12 yards and two yards outside the hash. And he was at 10 and standing on the hash. And he said, what's the difference? And I said, that's the difference between a championship effort and an average effort. There's Holmes around left side. Grabbed around the ankles. Robert Spillane. Got the shoe tops for Western Michigan. And you see the clock winding down here on this third quarter. More college football coming up later on tonight. 
Washington at Boise State. <laughs> An interesting game because it's Chris Peterson's return to Boise State. This time, though, he's on the opposite sideline. The people in Le Bois are fired up for this game. The Broncos got another great team under Brian Harson and uh, Chris Peterson getting things going at Washington. I know you talked to Pete about that game. We'll get your thoughts on what he's thinking heading back to Boise State tonight. Four fingers in the air. Means it's the end of the third quarter. They are rowing the boat before the start of the fourth quarter here at Waldo Stadium on the campus of Western Michigan University. And every bit of the coach in Hawk over here, he, it just oozes out of him at stuff like this. Row the boat, reach higher. You love this stuff. Building culture is such a big thing, and it's so awesome for young people to have something to grab onto and believe in and have something every day that they're working on. It's, it's a cool thing about sport. Connor Cook with the incompletion to start the fourth quarter. Michigan State with a 34-17 lead on Western Michigan. Now, the other thing you're hoping to gauge your squad on, if you're Michigan State, again, forget about the score or how much time is left. Let's keep playing football. Let's keep playing clean football. You don't want to get sloppy and say, well, yeah, okay, let's just mail this one in. You start fast, you finish strong, you play great on every down regardless of the score. Third down here in six. Cook looking for a receiver over the top of Josiah Price. It falls incomplete. Yeah, you talk about clean game, Hawk. One penalty in the game on Michigan State. That's pretty impressive for game one, but it shows you what's how they practice and the discipline that they practice with. And probably a good chance they had officials in practice as well, making sure everything went well. So the punt team comes on, the redshirt freshman Jake Hartbarger, who's had a couple of boomers earlier, in to kick with Daniel Braverman back to receive for Western Michigan. They might want to take a few steps back. Oh. Braverman lets it bounce. And they can't catch up to it before it slides into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. The Broncos have the ball in just a minute. See if they can put together another drive like the last one. Number five, Michigan State bringing it on defense. Popular all over the country. Going to rush six. These six are rushing, and these five guys right here are going to drop. Coach Pat Darnduzzi said Ohio State stealing our defense, and why not? Because it works pretty good. Puts pressure on the quarterback. Got to make a throw in a seam if he can't get it done. Pressure over coverage. Look at the co-defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Harlan Barnett. As Western Michigan goes back to work at its own 20-yard line. Zach Terrell takes the snap and gets pressured. Riley Buller is going to ride him down. Third sack of the night for Buller. Spying that quarterback and rushing through to put the hit. Talked about Pat Narduzzi, former defensive coordinator for the Spartans, now the head coach at Pitt. Here's what he said in a radio interview. I think everybody's stealing his defense. Everybody copies success. If you have success, everybody in the country is going to get your film and try to recreate what it is that you're doing. It's a copycat business. Loss of nine on that last sack. Second and 19 for Taro. He's got pressure again. Calhoun, he makes a miss. Comes out to the side. Throws to Bogan out of the backfield. And a flag comes down. Likely for the late hit. Would be just the second penalty of the game for the Spartans. And to the play. Personal foul. Defense. Number nine. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Monte Nicholson. You don't like those penalties, but, but, as a defensive coach, when you're playing aggressive football, sometimes you have some of that. You don't like it, you're trying to coach against it, but if you're trying to get guys to play aggressive, sometimes those things happen. It's a ball out to the 32-yard line. They pick up the pressure this time. Terrell throws. Got a man, Braverman, on the outside. Got a block. Still working his way down almost to the 40-yard line. 
Really super touch throw by Zach coming outside. Again, getting some pressure late. Michigan State doing a nice job disguising. Zach Terrell, 26 of 36 on the night. 270 yards passing. One touchdown throw, one interception. 26 on that play. Handoff inside. Bellamy, the, red, the uh, true freshman, gets most of 10 there to set up second and short. Bellamy, the freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana. Over 3,200 yards rushing in high school. 50 touchdowns. And Coach uh, Chiraca said, uh, the offensive coordinator said they were going to get him wet tonight. Well, he's, he's just touched the ball a couple of times, but a good pickup on that one. Fastest guy on the field. A little kind of a zone scheme inside. They actually were trapping a bit blitzing backer, and he hit it clean. Good stick and hit there to keep him from getting the first down. Darian Harris came up and stood Bellamy up. Bellamy tried to roll away to get to the sticks, but Harris wrapped him up and dragged him down. Not quite the same size as Jarvie and Franklin. They've been going a lot here uh, to some quick screen areas. Third and short, you don't have Jarvian in the game at tailback. Jamari Bogan has come back in. Can they convert? Press coverage outside here on Corey Davis. Bogan gets the give and gets the first down. Jamari Bogan, redshirt freshman, Union, New Jersey, 5'7", 174 pounds, seeing his first collegiate action. Good pickup. They're doing a nice job zone blocking and trapping the tackle in there. Damon Knox was playing the defensive tackle in there. Doing the old wham block on him inside. Terrell throws far side, looking for the ball. Davis almost brought it down. Defended there by Vionte Copeland. Like the fact they're giving him a shot. Vionte Copeland playing pretty well outside. He and Demetrius Cox have done a nice job and really established himself. They were the starter. Again, you see Vionte at the end just playing the hands. Gets a little bit out of pressure. <laughs> Been a great night for Davis so far. Seven receptions, 126 yards, one touchdown. But he's just been spectacular when he's touched the ball. Terrell pulls it back under pressure, throws down the middle and wide open, headed for the end zone. Jeremiah Molinax, touchdown Western. was a sweet little wrinkle. Kind of a little naked. Going to slip the back down the seam route. A little unconventional. Great red zone. Watch right here. We're going to slip out down the backfield. Coming this way. Going action the other way. Down the seam. Good little wrinkle. So two possessions this half, now two touchdowns for Western Michigan. And the point after try by Haldeman is good. Jeremiah Molinax, a sophomore from Lincoln Park, Michigan, played special teams last year, and the nursing major just carried the ball into the end zone for the Broncos. And they're on the board again. Watch Zach Terrell, stands in, takes the hit. Molinax with the touchdown. Quarter Michigan State and Western Michigan after two touchdown drives in the second half by the Broncos. Well, Ohio State won the national championship a year ago despite losing their opening game to the Virginia Tech Hokies. The rematch comes on Monday. You'll see it at 8 Eastern time on ESPN and streaming, streaming live on Watch ESPN. College football primetime on Monday. 
I would say that Urban Meyer will have very little trouble coming up with a motivating speech to his team before that game on Monday. Quarterback Connor Brewer had a great game there for Virginia Tech and then wasn't quite as consistent the rest of the year. Deep kickoff out of the end zone. And the ball will come out and uh, Michigan State will take over. Paul. You know, Alan, I've been tracking head coach Mark D'Antonio all game. Calm, letting his position coaches do their work. After that last touchdown by Western Michigan, he ripped his defensive backs, asking them for more effort, playing with their minds, and then he went back to the linebacker unit, went after them as well. He is not pleased right now with the defensive lapses and getting scorched in the passing game. Zach Terrell, 299 yards on the evening. We saw those numbers, second half. Broncos offense has been good. Near side, LJ Scott getting some yardage for the Spartans. Ah, LJ's got to put a move on a guy. You're out in space there. Again, thinking the fly sweep, coming back with a counter back here to the short side. Had success in the first half with that play, coming back to it. Again, the running back by series rotation that we've seen from Coach D'Antonio. Looking for who he's going to get the production from in that backfield. Fighting for the ball, Aaron Burbridge with the big strike from Connor Cook. Had to fight off Darius Phillips, but did so. He sure did. Aaron Burbridge showing up nice as a replacement. We talked about Tony Lippett and Mumphrey and Jeremy Lankford. Good back shoulder, a little bit of a push with the, with the arm and gets away with it. This is the kind of throw you need from a big-time quarterback. Give your guy an opportunity to make a play. Nobody needs a tight spiral that's three yards away from the guy that can catch it. Just Quick. give your guy a chance. Sorry about that, Hawk. Quickly, the Spartans at the 30-yard line going in. Scott rumbles around the outside. Gets knocked out of bounds by Jason Silva. Pursuing linebacker for the Broncos. LJ getting a little tight there. You see him with his hand on the back of his blockers. He needs to be a little patient, work on spacing. He got big guys that can get out there and move and block. Let those guys work. You see him tapping uh, big Jack Allen on the head there. His center who was pulling on that play. 233 pounds, six foot freshman from Hubbard, Ohio. Gets the ball again. Can he get the first down? He does. He's across the 20, down to the 19-yard line, and they move the chains once more, Paul. Alan, you mentioned the size of L.J. Scott. I was watching him in warm-ups. He is an absolute beast. I spoke to one of the strength and conditioning coaches, Mike Vorkopek. He said that he reminds him in terms of the way he plays, the way he looks, the way he's built of Le'Veon Bell. That's pretty nice. That'll get you some time at the next level. Seven rushes so far, 44 yards for Scott. Make this number eight. Gets a nice block, makes a nice cutback. Bouncing off of people wearing brown shirts, and he's going to get first down yardage. What an effort there by the Michigan State offense. Love how the old line comes in at the end of that play and just gets on the pile. Counter play coming back to the right-hand side. Fuller got the fullback. Trevor Pendleton, the fullback, doesn't get a lot of ink, but he's a big hammerhead for them inside. They hammer the ball inside again to Scott, and he'll be inside the five-yard line. Michigan State putting on a little power display here in this fourth quarter. Well, like I said, if you're going to be an elite team, you're a top-five team trying to get into the top four and make a move, you can't just coast. you got to get in, you got to finish teams. So credit the Broncos for hanging in there. It's a 10-point ball game right now, so you got to keep playing. Scott. Bang on the inside. Driving through with the leg. Silva again, 42. Who made the contact and just kept those legs moving. Watch this. You'll see the big lineman getting out and pulling. The Spartans run a little bit of zone, but they're so athletic in their offensive line. They're blocking down, kicking out, pulling, wrapping. That creates angles. It creates problems for a defense. Third and goal from the four. 
Watch out for Josiah Price down here. Going back to his fellow receivers. Got him again. Ooh, comes over the top. Goes over the top. Aaron Burbridge did not get a foot down inbounds. It'll bring up fourth. Had Josiah Price dragging across to the other upright. I thought that's where he was going to go. And threw behind him to Burbridge. Josiah Price, 6'4", 252. A lot of tight ends on this. Good seam route, good strong hands, just couldn't quite tap. So the kick team comes on. Michael Geiger, the junior from Toledo. Had hip surgery in the offseason. Very solid two years ago, not quite as good last year. And slices it through from that right hash mark. So the Spartans answer with a 21-yard field goal from Geiger, but the Broncos keep them from getting into the end zone when they have the ball inside the five. The drive, three and a half minutes, resulting in a 21-yard field goal. Michigan State leading now 37-24 over Western Michigan here in Kalamazoo. <laughs> and meanwhile, the Broncos on the other sideline pumped up the last two times they've had the ball. They put it in the end zone. That one will go through for a touchback. And uh, the Broncos will start off on their third offensive possession of this uh, second half. Quarterback numbers on the night. Connor Cook, Zach Terrell. Pretty efficient by Zach. He had four sacks in the first half. I think that was uh, the biggest issue there. Connor Cook, fairly pedestrian. I mean, he's okay. He's all right. Again, if you're trying to get to that next level, you're trying to reach higher. You want a probably a little higher percentage out of him. Coach D'Antonio's theme for the year, reach higher. <laughs> Terrell with time throws, was looking for the long ball to Davis, but Davis got tangled up on the far side with Fayante Copeland and was not there where the ball came down. Copeland, the redshirt freshman from Dayton, Ohio. The number 31 senior in Ohio and the ESPN.com's 2013 recruiting nation database. Folks at home, watch the D-line. Boy, that last time they just knocked Western about two yards back. And this is what happens when you have a dominant defensive line. You get late in the game, the size and strength. Just look at the push. Down goes Terrell. First time tonight, Shalik Calhoun has dropped the quarterback. Big up and under move. Pressure up inside, going to come from outside, up and under move. Good get off and pressure, see him spin and come under. When you can get home, when you can storm the castle with four guys and cover with seven, that's a huge luxury. So. Michigan State blitzes when they want to, not because they have to. The incompletion and then the sack swings the game situation big time. Terrell now needs a chunk. He's hanging in there trying to find someone to go. Here's a flag down. That'll probably come back. Falls incomplete in the vicinity of Corey Davis. Couldn't bring that in. And it is going to bring up a holding situation. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 70. 70. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Fourth down. So Paul reported on uh, Mark D'Antonio kind of chewing out his defense after that uh, last possession. I would say the motivational speech was effective uh, for their performance in this possession. Can't get lazy. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing, where you're playing, what the score is, you play. You play to your standard, you play to your level. And that's what he wants. And that's how why this team wins 11 games every year. That's why this team has won four bowl games in a row. 
Schrader with a punt that gets blocked. Going to take a roll, but Michigan State's going to be on the offensive side of the 50-yard line. Yeah, Joel Heath comes rolling in there. That's what happens when you get funky on punt pro. You get a little block. So timeout, six and a half to go here in Kalamazoo. A hand on the ball when he waited for the rugby-style kick. Night here at Waldo Stadium at Western Michigan. Sparty having the best fun on the night because they're up 37-24 on Western Michigan, the number five team in the country, opening a very difficult schedule that sees them play the Oregon Ducks in East Lansing next weekend. Talk more about that in a minute. Madre London on the field at running back. As the Spartans go first and 10 for the Western Michigan, 48 after the tip punt. There's London. Well, Hawk, one of the things we talked about tonight was that uh, Michigan State had some questions, uh, some things they had to find out as they get into the heart of their schedule. Running back was one of the things uh, they were exploring. I think you got to feel good about that. All these guys have been productive, done a nice job, uh, getting some yards after the care or after the contact. I think that's a positive moving forward. They're only going to get better. See L.J. Scott, the freshman there, number three. Look good at times. Gerald Holmes right there. And Madre London seems to be the, the favorite at the moment. Nothing much doing there for London. So the receiver was uh, one of the other areas and defensive back for Michigan State coming into this season. What have you seen from those two groups tonight? Well, I think you you got to like Bayonta Copeland and you got to like Day Day Cox, uh, Demetrius Cox. They've they done a nice job uh, behind them. Probably got a little bit of work to do. I think there's some freshmen that uh, they're trying to bring along. We haven't seen much of those guys. Strong as safety. Of course, they knew that. But still trying to build a little depth. And, of course, they'll need that depth when they play the Ducks next week. Third and ten, Cook throws downfield across the middle. Ball knocked in and out of the hands of A.J. Troop. And it will set up fourth down. Number seven, Oregon, going into East Lansing next week. That's a week from tomorrow night. Uh, college game day will be in East Lansing next Saturday. And then the game will be the ABC primetime game on Saturday night. I saw a conversation this morning on Mike and Mike about Michigan State. Uh, and the question was put uh, by Greeny to Chris Carter said, can Michigan State get to the national championship game with one loss? If Ohio State is their only loss this season, can they get to the college football playoff? I would say that depends on what other teams in the other, other conferences do, and I would say, what does that loss look like to Ohio State if, in fact, that does happen? The Ohio State game very late in the season. The Ducks next Saturday night. Of course, the Ducks haven't played their first game of the season yet. That'll be tomorrow uh, at home against Eastern Washington. And uh, the big question for Oregon, of course, the quarterback situation, which they've gone a, a long ways towards uh, sorting out for uh, next weekend. Vernon Adams shows up at quarterback for the Ducks. Of course, he played for Eastern Washington, was one of the best players in FCS football. You see him here. Uh, of course, they, they beat Oregon State. They nearly beat Washington. He threw for seven touchdowns when they played Washington. Don't adjust your TV. That red, that's the inferno. <laughs> but Vernon Adam, Adams graduates, goes down to the Ducks, steps in for Marcus Mariota, and now he's playing against his old team in game one. Zach Terrell throws deep down the field and looking to see if he could find Carrington Thompson for a big score. So the quarterbacks very much will be in the spotlight next Saturday night up at uh, Spartan Stadium. Look at Connor Cook and Vernon Adams Jr. Now those two teams you're comparing Adams last year with Eastern Washington and Cook with uh, the Spartans playing very different styles certainly. That was a game last year that Michigan State was doing a nice job until deep into the third quarter, and then the concrete started chipping away, and the Ducks ended up getting big plays and expanded that score late. Jamari Bogan outside for first down yardage. Here it is a year ago. Michigan State got up early on uh, the Ducks out in Eugene. 
But then later on in the game, Marcus Mariota and his high-flying cast of characters put a lot of numbers up on the board. He wound up winning that one 46-27. Malik McDowell, a little dinged up on the sideline, the freshman All-American defensive tackle. You know when you have a single number and you're playing the D-line, you better be a creature. You can't come in there with a single digit unless you're the man. Normally that number four is going to somebody on that back end, but we've Lucky. got Lawrence, Taylor, Lawrence Thomas and uh, Malik McDowell both with single digit up there. Caught an elbow on the head, it looked like, in that uh, contact. And so McDowell walking off the field. First out for Western, 22-yard line. He's a sophomore. He's uh, up in that group with a bunch of fifth-year seniors. Terrell looking to throw. Nobody can throw two. Now one of his receivers shakes loose. Did Braverman get it on the sideline? Yes, they say. You got to love these Broncos, and you got to love P.J. Fleck. These guys are not going away. They're not quitting. They're not hanging their head. They're continuing to play. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Walking the rope. Terrell looked like he was limping a little bit coming back up to the new line of scrimmage. They're going to look at that one, make sure that he was inbounds. Previous play is under further review. Yes, they are. Yeah, he is a little gimpy. Tough kid. Definitely got his yeah, foot in. He had the ball. That's nice work. Nice job with the spin, landing on your back. Another little subtle thing in receiving, trying to twist your body so that ball doesn't come out or bounce against the ground and you, you erase any doubt. Braverman, a uh, redshirt junior from Miramar, Florida, came from the university school down there. That's where he played his high school ball. Ball, foot. Possession. Tough kid, of course, he hit, hurt his leg earlier in the game, and I'm glad to see him back playing because that was, he kind of landed in a really nasty spot. Yeah, got twisted around pretty good. And, uh, you know, talking about Michigan State and looking ahead next week, and if you look at the, uh, the far sideline in Western Michigan, they've got Georgia State next week. They have Ohio State coming up, and then a very difficult uh, MAC conference schedule for the Broncos. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 426. 426. Thank you. So a look at the uh, upcoming schedule for the Broncos. It's not very easy for them. In fact, they have uh, one of the more difficult schedules. They've got the toughest schedule in the MAC, and according to those who rate such things, the 33rd toughest schedule in all of FBS football. Certainly in significant measure because they've got both Michigan State and Ohio State and they're on conference slate. This side, Levante Bellamy with the carry for the Broncos. And then that tough Max schedule. You know, uh, Max a tough conference. It's competitive football. And you find yourself having to play Bowling Green and then go on the road to play Northern Illinois and Toledo to try and win your division and get in the conference championship game at the end of the season. It's a, it's a tough, I would say, row to hoe, except it's row to boat around here. Oh, you're so subtle. I'm a trained professional. Don't find yes, it so hard. Terrell throws outside. He and the uh, receiver, Davis, were not on the He's same like schedule. A uh, route to uh, read. They're in the West, which is probably the tougher division, and then they play the better teams yep. from the East. So you're right, the road won't. You see that left ankle of Zach Terrell really taped up, and he's he's really hobbling. That last ball kind of died on him. He's not be able to get out over his front foot much. Makes so it's it hard to follow through. So third and three here for Terrell. Looking for Davis. He's got it. 
Looking for the sideline and a little bit of extra yardage. Run out of bounds by Demetrius Cox. And they'll move the chains for the Broncos. And, and say what you want about the, the score line right now and the difference between the two. But certainly the Broncos have been entertaining for their fans who came out to see this game tonight. They've shown a lot of grit and a lot of heart and uh, have been very entertaining with the ball that they've played. Well, they're missing the MAC player of the year and the freshman of the year and tailback Jarvion Franklin. They're missing their fire plug in the middle, Grant De Palma, the leader of their defense. Two impact players in this game for the Broncos are not suited up. Franklin went out earlier after taking a knee to the head. And uh, in the early part of the game, De Palma uh, got twisted around and suffered a groin injury. And he went out of the game. That was uh, way back early in the game. Now, P.J. Flex's attitude when we asked him about that tough schedule and so on, obviously part of it in this day and age of college football is revenue-driven. But he said, hey, we'll play anyone everywhere. You only, he said, great reward comes with great risk. And he said that you only learn to be the best by playing the best. And a flag there as Davis interfered with by R.J. Williamson. So they'll move the chains one more time. Pass interference. Defense, number 26. The ball will be placed at the spot of the infraction. Automatic, first down. And the fans from this uh, great crowd that turned out here at Waldo Stadium that have stuck around wearing the home colors still have something to cheer for here as we come up on three minutes to go in the ballgame. P.J. Flex said Michigan State coming to town was the biggest thing since 1970 when Simon and Garfunkel had showed up here. Davis gets away from the defense, gets the first down, gets inside the 25-yard line, got away from the first contact and eventually brought down, but another first down for the Broncos. What a night like Davis has had tonight, huh? Yeah, he's really showing big. And really, the whole Broncos are showing big. It's nice. Look at the numbers there. 152 yards and a touchdown. And maybe not done yet. Got the ball again. Gets away from one. Caught up to from behind finally. And knocked down there. Big 72 Craig Evans pursued from the inside out. And caught up to him from behind. This is one of those games I guarantee you people think, oh, yeah, it's Allen. I've seen uh, 16 points scored in 24 seconds. I've seen 20 points scored in four minutes. I, I've seen some wild things. And it, that old saying, it's never over till it's over. They score a touchdown here and get Time an onside out. kick. Michigan it's on. State. First of the half. The 30 second charge. Time. Yeah, Spartan's going to. Sit down and talk about it here for a second and uh, see if they can uh, get organized and get a stop here and get this thing over with. Start uh, getting in victory formation, if you will. It's a long way from that. <laughs> Whew. Two minutes, eternity. Well, we've talked a lot tonight about culture. Two programs here, Mark D'Antonio in Michigan State and P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan that are building a culture around their football programs. It's something you're big on. You've done it before. It's a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of elements to go into it, but it's crucial to having championship football. Yeah, and it takes dedication and commitment from your administration, your supporters, all those people that are going to fill in those gaps. But you've got to have a vision. Without vision, the people perish. And then you follow it, and you stay with it, and you stay committed to it. And you've seen that through D'Antonio's tenure at Michigan State. He said he became because of the people and the commitment. And Western Michigan has done the same thing. They made a big financial commitment to P.J. Fleck last year. He's the highest paid coach in this league by a long shot. Wow. Outside and Braverman calls it in inside the 10. First and goal, Broncos. Zach Terrell with a great up and down ball, throwing that thing into a hole. Over the top of the backer. That is a big time throw. It's 
one thing to throw through a clear window, but when you have to throw over a defender into a hole and turn that thing over, and he's gimped up. Terrell throws, looking for Davis, intercepted in the end zone. Bayonte Copeland will end that drive for the Broncos and let the air out of the bubble. Simple fade route, they've been going to it. Corey Davis probably getting a little bit worn down. He's throwing it right where you want to. You want to try to throw it in a trash can right at that cone, in front of that back cone. Corey just stuttered probably a little bit too long at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't quite go up for it. I don't think he picked the ball up either. Looking at the uh, replays there, looked like I, I don't think he even saw where it was coming down. And that's probably what they're going to talk about right now. And so the ball goes over to the Spartans with a minute and a half left to go in this one. So you're Mark D'Antonio. You've had a variety of different offensive players and formations on the field tonight. Some of that trying things in people, some of it maybe giving Mark Helfrich and the Ducks something to think about as they watch film. Yeah, I think you're not going to show anything in this game unless you feel like uh, it's going to lead to other things next week. I mean, they're preparing largely for Western Michigan, but uh, some of the unbalanced stuff, some of the different things they're doing, Clearly, sometimes you want your opponent to think about that and have to plan or over plan. We saw the funky formation on the extra point after the first touchdown. Yep. That's something Oregon does all the time. Now DP, Don Pelham, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, he's got to say, okay, well, what if they do this? What if they do that? Of course, Tom Osborne, the special teams coach from Oregon, he's showing him that stuff in practice. Uh, so it'll be interesting. A large responsibility is going to be on this offense to be productive um, and move the ball and move the chains and score touchdowns uh, and be able to keep pace with Oregon. They can't afford to go you know, a couple series and go three and out and let the engine of the Ducks get revved up. So that's the primetime game next Saturday night as college game day will be in East Lansing for Oregon number seven at number five Michigan State want to get a thought here also from you uh, ESPN college football continuing the late night game tonight is Washington at Boise State underway already over on ESPN as we watch LJ Scott fight for some late yardage coach Pete's return to Boise State he was on your staff when you were the coach of the Broncos and then took over that program never fun to go back home the Broncos are loaded Brian Harson uh, played for us coach Cutter was the coach there I was the coach Pete was the coach now uh, Harse is the guy a long lineage of coaches and players on both sides uh, that have been been a big part of the Bronco tradition and Pete we talked about culture he's trying to get that blue collar thing going at Washington and that's that's the Boise State moniker of being blue collar and work hard and be a team guy and a lot like Michigan State uh, if you got a red shirt red shirt Look at the freshman. Number three, she got the ball here for the Spartans, forced out of bounds by number 10. Look Spillane. at the freshman. That was an impressive. Wasn't a long run, but broke a lot of tackles, showed some good balance, good pad level. Play till the last whistle. Especially when you're in an ongoing competition uh, at running back, as uh, Michigan State has. Hats off to the youngest coach in college football, P.J. Fleck, doing an awesome job. Proud of the way he's mentoring these guys, and he's got a strong vision. Of course, he wants to win, but he's all about the process. They don't talk about winning. They don't talk about the product. They just talk about getting better and rowing the boat every day. And hats off to Mark Hollis and both uh, Western Michigan and Michigan State for having the number five team come over to Kalamazoo and play here at Waldo Stadium on the campus of Western Michigan University. The Spartans will come away with a 37-24 win, setting up their game next weekend at home against number seven, Oregon. Well, 48 games on college football kickoff weekend on the ESPN Network. Some of them last night, a number of them today and tonight. And a lot of action to recap from this Friday of college football's opening weekend.
And we will begin that process coming up in moments with the college football scoreboard with Brendan Fitzgerald and Kevin Carter back in our studio. Hawk, it was fun. A good start.